You are now listening to the Save Cast, the number one old school RuneScape podcast featuring guests from all across Galenor. To support this podcast, visit the Patreon link in the description. All right, welcome to the Save Cast number 91 with Lake. Lake, how you doing this fine afternoon? Yo, doing pretty well, man. Very excited to be on. Been uh, been listening for a very long time since the very first one. Yeah, I uh, I remember in particular the Lane episode. You were a huge fan of that one. That was oh yeah, <laughs> crazy to think that was over a year and a half ago now. It feels like yesterday. Yeah, it was kind of a. It became like a part of my routine, kind of, because we were we were on the same grind, man. That was nightmare yeah. days. <laughs> yeah. We were we were like connecting emotionally. Yeah, we <laughs> we really were, to be honest. I mean, I don't think anybody else. I know there were people that weren't streamers that were. Uh, who was the guy that was like uh, just ahead of you that had completed Nightmare as an Iron Man? What was that guy's name? He wasn't a streamer. Uh, I'm trying to remember. But he was like the only other guy that I really felt probably knew. It was a solitary guy, but I can't remember. Yeah, who. I think it started with a B. But I can't even remember what his name was. Um. Yeah, it definitely started with a B. I can like I can almost like imagine what his name is, but that was definitely the most brutal grind. Uh in fact, we'll just bring it up right now. Oh boy, straight into nightmare. Let's go. <laughs> I, just, I just think like uh, we could say we bring it up later, but no, let's just bring it up right now. Nightmare. Um thoughts on nightmare, just in general, like your whole grind. In fact, I've stated a bajillion times how awful the grind was for me. You did more Nightmare than I did. So when people empathize with me or, like, have any sort of sympathy for, like, the shit I dealt with, Lake literally dealt with it more. <laughs> In fact, I mean, you got so fucked over that you literally completed it, like, the day before Fasani's was announced. At least I had that sort of, I don't know, it... I had the hope that, oh, I get to grind Fasani's. Of course, it was only for one day, but I actually had a little bit of hope that I would have a better grind, but yeah. You know, right now, you're kind of just saying, well, I spent like three years in prison, but at least I didn't have to spend four. (laughs) Dude, it was was so bad. So how many kills did it take for your Inquisitor's Mace? Because that was the last thing you needed, right? Um, 4,000 solos is the easiest way to put it. Yeah, geez. It's like 4,500 KC or whatever I am, but it equated to 4,000 solos. 4,334 is the actual KC. Dear God. Yeah, that, it's just um, people, I think, forget as well that there was no such thing as a sleepy tablet. I don't even oh, think yeah. you know what a sleepy tablet is, do you? Because have you ever done any Fasani no, I, yet? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm 600 KC at Fasani. I, I don't oh. have the egg. They took away my green log and I can't get it back. Oh my, wait, you're 600 and you still don't have the egg? Yeah, they they made me go triple the drop rate on the mace, took away my green log, and now I'm triple the drop rate on the egg. <laughs> that is so fucked up. I just went past drop rate for the egg. I'm still missing that. And I'm still missing an Eldritch, but yeah. Was, and you did like all your Fosani like day one. <laughs> yeah, th- those were dark days uh, pre Fosani's. Like that was actually affecting my mental health in real life, like hardcore. I just, I knew that I had to get it and I knew I had to keep up this grind and so every day before streaming i'm just like i have to one tick flick this fucking boss for next six hours like oh my god it was bad oh yeah that's like that's like the one like grind i've ever done on this game where like if i can go back i would not do it (laughs) it's so true that people ask me that shit about like the the twisted bow and shit like that all the time and it's like i i enjoyed that yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, there's definitely grinds that are fun. Nightmare, just, there was nothing fun about it. It was no redeeming quality. Yeah, it was It was literally a chore, like doing it strictly to get the stuff from it. <laughs> and you're lo- not, not and, enjoying it whatsoever. And like we were losing money from it. I mean, we were both using scythes, I'm pretty sure. I know like you would kind of switch oh, yeah. off here and there, but that site, like we were just off stream was just buying blood runes that's it was just buy blood during runes. the nightmare grind i spent one bill on blood runes between sanguine sd and, and uh scythe yep that was uh about me too as soon as i got my first piece of inquisitors at like 500 kc it was just all scythe never bludgeon again and it was yeah that was painful <clears throat> um I oh actually... yeah by the time i finished i was i was down to swamp trident and bludgeon <laughs> Doing like, they were like 1930, like regular solos. It was like barely faster than a beginner setup. It's funny how when they announced Fasani's, it was like, this is going to be a hard mode version of it. 
and it, maybe it's just different like i think we looked at it differently because we had just gotten so much muscle memory down with nightmare that fasani's came out and it was actually easier like yeah. significantly <laughs> easier like they actually made mechanics a lot less it, it did really feel like a big head start like actually like having that much nightmare experience when oh. fasani came out oh yeah i mean people ask me they're like what do you think is harder cg or fasani's i've been asked that multiple times and i'm always like oh fasani's is way easier but everybody thinks cg is way easier and i'm like yeah but when fasani came out we were already at the point where we wouldn't have to think twice about switching prayers or yeah and dodging I, the black holes like you just do that shit subconsciously at that point yeah it, that must have been it because uh Fasani's like everyone so like i'm sure you had the same experience streaming it like People would ask you how you preemptively timed the black holes like so consistently and stuff. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't even think about it, man. <laughs> yeah, just spend a thousand hours doing this shit over nine yeah. months. Yeah, you'll learn. Um, I actually made a okay, ramble other... this, this morning right. talking about Nightmare. Um, I don't know if you watched that or not, but I was just offering some solutions potentially. Because right now, I think Nightmare is like just three mil GP For Fasani or for, for regular Fas Nightmare? Fasani's. It's like three mil an hour, which is... I don't know. I, and I'm not a main, of course. Neither of us are mains, but, like, it's just a weird place. Uh, Nightmare, just in general, is in a weird place because the armor's not, like, great. And the orbs are pretty pointless. So I just want to ask you, like, do you have any suggestions? Or do you think Nightmare's fine as is? Or do you think there should be, I don't know, some changes? So I think, uh, I think Volatile and Eldritch are fine. Arm is essentially useless like what's its only use right now uh ice demon and then pvp <laughs> yeah pretty much and it, it's one of those weapons in pvp that like really you're only going to use it for like making a clickbait youtube video because <laughs> most people aren't going to want to either have to risk like a really good spec whip or not be able to take a really good spec whip yeah it's extremely awkward to use too especially when you see people switching and then they have to set up their auto cast again that i that the whole autocast feature is just so clunky. God. I remember like accidentally brewing during pillar pillars at regular nightmare. Yep. And just like the the immediate brain fuck it would cause. <laughs> You're just dashing toward it about to staff bash a pillar. It is so cool. Yeah, and just everything going wrong at once in the whole time. <laughs> you just can't like set your autocast. <laughs> Yeah, or like, oh my God. you'd like barely brew down, so your magic level's at like 93, and you're just, like, it should be at 94 by that point, or, or uh, what is it, 95 for a uh, fire surge, but yeah, just horrible, because you, you think you're restored fully, but you're not, you're never really looking. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, harm is, uh, I don't even know how to fix it at this point, like, we can't just make it rival the Shadow's DPS. It's good for Ice Demon, but it's like, how good like, is Shadow? Where do, where do we want Ice it to be, now, you know? Oh, I guess I guess Ice Demon's immune or uh Yeah, it's specifically because of the fire surge. Oh yeah, okay. With the fire spells. I wonder when they're gonna just make an overall change. I know that would just like kind of make the game feel a little bit weird having other monsters have weaknesses to uh, mental spells, but it's like the old uh BC Guppy duck. Yeah. Him him and GE Challenge, I think was that the person he would always like Say if he, if it was just BC Guppy and GE Challenge, they could just like rebalance the game perfectly, basically. Although the game would definitely seem a lot more foreign, it would definitely make a lot more sense the way they would balance oh, yeah. it. So they would just have to take the game offline for like a year. Yeah, <laughs> literally, literally, it would just be such an overhaul. I remember when they were talking about adding different styles of range because we have like stab, crush, and uh, slash in melee. They were kind of suggesting back with the equipment rebalancing a potential new styles to range like piercing and blunt and magic based range and although that sounds great it's just such a big overhaul and there would inevitably just be so many balance issues just coming from that itself so this game is clunky i don't know yeah as well as like not just redoing every single item that's already in the game but that's more to think about for future items too yeah it's tough do you have any uh suggestions sort of on balancing in general i mean i know that's just a huge broad topic but it... like the entire game <laughs> I don't oh, know, God. Just, just certain things. I think the big thing that sticks out to me is standard spells. Just the standard spells are so, so ancient. Like, just 
they're just so old. They make no sense. Why does Air Strike max a two and Fire Strike, which is literally like <laughs> takes five more minutes to level up to that point, hit four times the amount of damage? Like, I don't know. It's just everything is so weird when it comes to the standard spell book. It's so old. Yeah. And that's something like everyone as a kid thought that everything had like weaknesses like that. Like you'd be casting water blast on like fire giants. <laughs> Yeah. Like thinking like logically that it would do something, you know? Yeah, and like the old when old school first came <clears> out, everyone's wearing their hunter outfits, thinking it gave an invisible hunter boost. Like every yeah, I don't know though. I mean, a rebalance like that would be good. Like it would make sense. Like it'd be logical, and it would add like a little bit of life to like the mid game. But it's not going to change shit end game. Yeah. Like it's something that you would like done just because it makes sense, but at the same time, like it's not going to change the way you're playing RuneScape at all. Yeah, that's true. I do... Th I, I think it's kind of silly they came out with a uh, Shadow right before they... Well, I guess the Shadow wasn't even supposed to be a Shadow. It was supposed to be the, the two-tick wand initially, and then that kind yeah, of just kind of probably changed. Um, I was really excited for that two-tick wand. I although... feel like they've pretty much accepted that like standard spellbook is for alchemy and teleports <laughs> you know. and like that that that's why they're going with like the powered staffs over and over and over again and yeah. they've seen the one non-powered staff has failed a lot yeah the <laughs> now the harm's just awkward just the it's whole just too restrictive to not be able to be on whatever spell book you want 100 percent. and that was um that was something i didn't like about the hecka as well was uh you already have so many factors for what spell book you want to be on like Let's take TOA. Some people are running like Venge and shit. Some people are running uh, Thralls. Most people are. Some people are running Ancients, especially at higher invocations. So like imagine that and then imagine adding this Hecka to it where you have to also think about which spellbook you want to be on for the passive effect. Yeah, they made some weird. That was my problem with that. the Hecka is yeah. like it was just going to it was going to make picking loadouts stressful. Yeah, no, that was 100% true. That that change came later, though. There was originally not supposed to be a spellbook um, thing. It was only simply because I don't think the wand was powerful enough or something like that, so they wanted to add some additional things. And then the whole... Dude, the Hecate was the most confusing item in the entire like game's history. Basically. Yeah, with like the varying attack game. speed. That, and on top of that, like all the spellbook unique effects. Like, I, I couldn't even wrap my head around it. I'm like, what is happening? Like, I, I just needed it to come into the game so I could actually mess around with it and then I'd understand. But, dude, on paper, it made no sense to me. It just everything flew through my head. I think their idea was to make it like really good average DPS, but without it just blasting out 40s every two ticks. Yeah. They didn't want another blow pipe. Yeah. And that's kind of what happens with fast speed weapons that being said like now that we have the shadow i think that's like the next uh mage weapon is like a two tick wand yeah i think so but too. without like the varying attack speed without the like basically a magic blow pipe yeah I, I mean i think that's actually a good thing to have as well it doesn't need to be crazy powerful but just something on that level of blow pipe for mage they also do you remember the zarite bow that they were proposing and yeah. they actually let us test for a little bit yeah, I uh, I never actually got around to using it, but I watched a lot of videos of it. Yeah. Uh, super bust in the Inferno. <laughs> I know a lot of like people yeah. that are really big into BA and really big into the Inferno were like super against it just because of how much of a meta shift it would be. Yeah, it seemed a little bit private servery. I know that's just like a really common word to just use to throw out with whenever anything's weird. But Cbet, if you know him, he was doing some Inferno runs with that. And, like, literally, they're just, like, on that wave where there's two meleeers. Like, he just shot one of them. And regardless of where the other meleeer was, it would just hit both of them just really hard. Jesus. I'm like, there's, like, really no plan. I mean, because I was under the impression that the bow would hit anything within, like, a two-tile radius. But I think it was based off of the perimeter rather than the southwest tile of monsters. So, like, so are you saying it was too easy to use, like, oh, compared yeah. to something like Chinning? Oh yeah, because chinning like chinning is very good, but chinning is very difficult. Yeah, you chinning have to position takes a everything correctly. Of... You have to think about the compass the entire time. Yep. With the Zarai bow, no, it was just like shoot and like you're basically. You have to make sure good. to target the weaker one. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing with that with the Zarai. Actually, I think there was something with the Zarai bow based off of. Um... No, no, no. I think it actually rolled on individuals' accuracy. Actually, 
like whatever or uh defense whatever <laughs> so it, it basically just like rewarded like random gameplay <laughs> exactly it was funky i still like run around and click stuff and everything dies it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like playing leagues it's, it was literally like playing leagues when i was yeah. watching cbet because that's the feeling you have when you play leagues like <laughs> Even, just like, I, I think all good players even feel this way. Like, when you're playing leagues, you just throw everything you know out the window, and you just <laughs> run around and click shit. Yeah. I mean, I, w I was getting really pumped. Like, I never played Trailblazer, but I remember, like, the idea of it. Like, ooh, that's going to be pretty cool to get all these, like, new, uh, you know, abilities and stuff. Like, sp sped up attacks. But, yeah, like you said, you watch people do bandos. They have that little orb. So, it's just nonstop going there. Pray melee, AFK, kill everything, teleport out, teleport back. It's just like it made the game Everything so is dull. so strong that, like, it's not worth it to put in effort. You <laughs> no, it is. Benefit pointless. from it. <laughs> I know. And that's actually sort of how I feel like the game is drifting to. That's inevitable, I feel like. Where God Wars now feels like it's just so easy. It used to, like, kind of have a challenge to it. Um,. I think we're going to get to the point when, uh, like, Raids 4 comes out or some crazy defensive armor comes out where you can literally just AFK. I mean, right now, you can seriously AFK Grardor with a Bulwark and full Torva. Like, or full Justiciar, like, whatever you choose, basically. Like, that thing, you just pray melee, pray piety, and you can just AFK it. And, I mean, I know that takes a lot of, like, high-end gear and stats, but... Yeah, I mean, by this point, we've seen so many videos of people... Den's just the AFK fight caves, Inferno, Arachnus. Yep. This goes on. Yeah. So let's take a brief introduction of who you are. I know most people listening to this probably have an idea of who you are, but uh, if you'd like to just kind of list off some bullet points of like some notable achievements or uh, notable things. Oh that God, you're a streamer. So flex away. Um. <laughs> My name's Lake. It's my real life first name. I don't have like some kind of water obsession. That's a really <laughs> common thing. Uh, I've been playing old school since 2015. I started streaming it in 2017. Uh, pretty much since then, streaming has been my full time job, but I've had some part time stuff along the way with it uh, here and there. Very cool. Wait, sorry. Uh, when did you say you started old school? 2015. Okay. I played a little bit, like, on release, like, actual release, like, a month or something like that, but r real life caught up to me. Mm. And, uh, like most of us, I have a very addictive personality. So, uh, I was, like, uh, new. yeah, I was, uh, I was running track in college at the time, so, like, that had to be my priority, so I, I couldn't play the game as much as I wanted to, yeah. so I had to, like, just not play at all. And then in 2015, I started actually like playing it again. And then 2017, started streaming. So 2015, did you start as an Iron Man or were you a main? Um, I started a main, but didn't really play it too long. I played it for maybe like three months. I uh, was getting into like the Slayer grind, was starting to get where my combats were up there, like high 80s, maybe 90. And then... Uh, I just restarted it and made an Iron Man because I got bored. Yeah, you had a uh, pretty <laughs> insane Iron Man at the time. I mean, in my books, one of the craziest just simply because of that Third Age Longsword. Um, and BC Guppy. Well, that didn't last very long. Yeah. I know I know BC Guppy. I know you guys have a history and stuff, but uh, he was... I just remember, I think you and him and I know Curtis and some other huge gamers were starting Corp and stuff. And uh, yeah. Yeah, Sig. the the old yeah sig the olden days of court like dude that was back when if you saw an iron man with a sigil like a spirit shield you were just like holy fuck like that's like absolute <clears> beyond <throat> end game like just totally beasting um, those kills were actually horrible bgs was what you did for pretty much all of it you <laughs> had one bgs spec at a time you went to nightmare zone after doing a watchtower teleport to get your spec <laughs> back jesus uh, no POH. Uh, the Corp Cave had a cave that was about four times as long as the current one before <laughs> the current one. Yeah. Like just an entire extra room <laughs> that you just run all the way through. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that was not great. And you had to suicide, right? Like you had to suicide. Yeah. After after specking it down, you would. Yeah. It, it would it would take forever to get get it to zero. You'd be doing like two kills an hour 
Yeah, that's absurd. So you did get lucky though. What did you get on your first Iron Man? Uh, I had Arcane and Spectral in like thirteen hundred. Okay. So. Was that's actually like average? I think. Was Sig the first guy that got an Ellie, or who was it? Not like for an Iron Man. Uh, Sig got the first sigil ever. I think it was an Arcane. Okay. Yeah, he got the first sigil ever. Yeah, that was <clears> crazy <throat> stuff. And then uh, the third age longsword back when master clues weren't even a thing, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't even remember how many elites. Like maybe a hundred something. Yeah. Jeez. That was also when uh, you remember the fun elites when they were like thirteen steps. <laughs> Yep, nine nine to twelve. Uh -huh. Just, yeah, pain. Dang, yeah, the good old days. You you know uh, Arland or Iron Cub, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah, guy. We've been friends for a long time. That guy pulled a bow and a long sword on his Iron Man Third Age. Just like what the. His account is so good, but he just won't go do the Inferno. <laughs> Close my mind. I know. Well, here's the thing. How how I look at the game. And how I look at, like, older, kind of, like, veterans of the game, sort of. RuneScape isn't the same game as it was back in 2015. Like, oh, yeah, not at all. It's so different. Like, everything was kind of related to XP back then. And just, like, putting in time. There was no real... Yeah, everything skill. everything came down to how many hours something took. Yep. Everything was a settled video. Yep, literally. Yeah, that's... Uh, when, when did that switch, do you think? inferno honestly yeah inferno when uh people started realizing that like there is like a pvm skill cap on this game yeah i feel like that was like a big shift in community focus so let me ask you because you were the first player i believe to have done a no pillar inferno is that correct uh yeah but no one else was really trying <laughs> still no pillar it just was first of all it's kind of like it's kind of like if you like went and slammed your head against the wall and you're like <laughs> i'm the first person to do this i always had that weird flex of like i'm the i'm the first iron man with a dragon full helm and an eternal glory just like the weirdest flex you have to like combine things um it's impressive though congrats yeah thank you well not first of either first of having both so and that's literally just me guessing. I don't actually know. But uh, something to flex. So I want to ask, uh, uh, I wanna ask actually about the Inferno release, how you felt at the time. Because I don't really, th I don't know. Like, I just remember back in the day, like, I knew, like, I knew of you simply because I started watching your stream early, early on. But um, I did didn't really know of the best gamers. I had heard of Wooks. I had heard of Cloud Badass. I'd heard of Reed. Like, I'd heard of, like, these people that just did, like, at the time, crazy feats, like, 10 hours of DKs and flicking bandos and stuff. But I feel like Inferno was really the time where it was the introduction to who's actually a gamer in this game. And uh, Yeah, I mean, before, in before Inferno, we had God Wars flicking, and that was it. <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, was that the only sort of skill in the game? I think that was... I know Corp, like Wooks doing the Potato Corp or whatever he did, it was uh, pretty impressive. Like well. Chambers Chambers was out, but at that time, Solo Chambers was so daunting, like very few people even tried it. Yeah. Yeah, so how was the Inferno for you? Because for me, holy shit, I, when it first released, like I was just camping watching it in school for like two days straight and i was like i will never oh, yeah. enter that place ever that looks like hell that looks awful were you grinding so that was uh yeah that was actually before i started streaming so i was a full-time emt at the time but i had uh i had four days off work for the inferno and uh i probably <laughs> i probably spent 20 hours a day for, the, for those four days trying to do that shit Jeez. uh release i think i was the first person to make it the triple jeds uh, I made it to Triple Jads about three hours after the update came out. How was that? What was your uh, what was your first impression? I immediately died because <laughs> I saw three Jads spawn, and I didn't know they would be off-ticked automatically, so I ran under one of them thinking I had to do some voodoo shit to off-tick them. <laughs> because, like, no no one had gotten know, there yet. I didn't know they were going to be off-ticked. I saw three Jads, and I ran under one. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I died very quickly. Jesus. That was so exciting, uh, man. For me, uh, for me, like the anxiety of Zuck was like the really, really hard part. I, uh, 
I think I died at Zuck like 18 times before I beat it the first time. Yeah. I got my cape on a week of release, but yeah, I, th- I was dying at Zuck daily. Yeah, that was... Uh... I mean, there was no such thing as tile markers. You had no idea the timers. You had no idea when stuff spawns, like... Yeah, I mean, just the just Zook becoming enraged, that's confusing on its own. You don't know where to, like, move. Yeah, that was uh, that was the part that was really confusing for me that I didn't understand at the time, and probably what a lot of people misunderstand, too, was the attack speed changing. Yeah, and just knowing where you can be. It's sometimes with RuneScape, it's so hard to tell, like, what's actually safe or not. I actually saw a clip on Reddit today of some guy getting meleeed by the... Uh, phase two warden back like as soon as you kill the core you know how warden's loading up but it's stalled but it's actually following you yeah the dude ran like 10 tiles and still got melee to death and it looked like the warden was way far back so yeah I think like a recent that. clip or is that like an old Re- clip recent clip like it literally like oh, I think God. It was today because the warden just stands still like the or like the one that like whenever you're you transitioning know. to phase three no 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 sorry so on, oh okay on so two, he didn't he didn't okay yeah. it was like he woke back up for the next exactly down. yeah right after he right after he not killed i thought you were talking about the thing i don't know if you saw that ever happen but that was happening a lot whenever you would finish phase two and the transition to phase three during that little cutscene, warden would wake up and just hit the shit out of you <laughs> what the fuck i have i've never seen that no it, it happened to me a lot <laughs> i would take like 80 damage like just on the transition oh god he'd be able to like melee you twice so here i i really want to talk about toa but let's uh i I want to talk a a little bit more about inferno so inferno you got your infernal cape within the first week what was it then did why like for most people when they get their infernal cape they're like okay thank god like i don't have to ever go back there but you clearly got some enjoyment out of it so what was your uh, experience i guess much like toa i uh kind of just only did inferno for like three months or something like that (laughs) Like, after I got my first cape, I didn't, like, want to go around the game doing other stuff with it. I just wanted to go right back in. Sheesh. Uh, a big a big motivator for me at the time is, like, trying to go faster with it. Mm-hmm. Were there, like, speed runs at the time around the first month? Were there, like, certain times? Yeah, but cool? nothing like they are now. Uh, oh, yeah. Everything was off task, and obviously we were all a lot worse at the game. So it was, like... I, th- I think the benchmark at that point was like if you were doing sub seventy five, you were killing it. Mm-hmm. So you had you were doing this on your main, is that correct, or on your iron? Man? Yeah, which is the the old D iron iron man. Okay, that makes sense. And then okay, so I I was confusing the that, timeline. Yeah, so this was before my current iron man even existed. Yeah, because I remember you grinding the early iron man, what your iron man is now, Lake. But that was after the whole no pillar thing, because that yeah, that must have been late 2017 when I was watching. Yeah, basically, uh, no pillar was like when I started streaming. Like I had been streaming for like two weeks or a month maybe before that. Mm-hmm. So like that was like when I started streaming, and I just like I don't know, Inferno was new and it was doing well with viewers, so it was like trying to think of random shit to do with it every day. Yeah, the uh, the graceful Inferno. <laughs> Did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> awesome just like just super random stuff man yeah how was the no pillar inferno did you think it was possible initially before you um, started it i thought <clears throat> i thought it would be a lot more like rng based than it was as in like uh just the way before i started it i didn't think you would be able to like reliably just tank one hit the same way you would like with pillars Mm. and that you would be able to have ways to fix it after tanking one hit pretty much every time. A big part of that was because when I first started, I didn't think about using, like, dragging out of their attack range for off-taking very yeah. much. Yeah. I was purely thinking about running under off-taking. Mm. So I was like, if it's far away, I'm going to get hit, like, four times. And then whenever I started it, I realized I can just run away and they'll drag. Yeah. Yeah, because it seems like the. I mean, what are the ranges of those monsters? I swear they have like fifteen tile, twenty tile. Yeah, ranges. very far. Yeah. But uh, I I thought it would be like a lot harder than it was basically. And then, like I said, that was whenever I first started streaming. And again, my nerves were the death of me. I I uh, I died on Zuck seven times doing the Nobular Inferno. Oh God. And uh, I only died on the waves like two times. 
Yeah. Dang, that's insane. So it, it, yeah, it like really sums up, sums it up for me. <laughs> so that it was, it was fun though. It was like it was super clickbait, and it was definitely a good like head start for my stream. Yeah, I want to. I, I kind of want to ask about that. Just starting off streaming, polling, I mean, <clears> I'm assuming <throat> hundreds of viewers, may, maybe even thousands. I don't know what. That's yeah, um, I got hosts from both Wooks and Bodhi. So, like, that's about the best head start you can ask for. Yeah, holy shit. Like I said, I had been streaming for a month at that point. <laughs> I kind of had a head start to streaming in general because uh, after, like, the whole hacky incident, I already had, like, a decent Twitter following for whatever reason. People being nosy, I guess. Yeah, what was that? But, I, I wasn't, um, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that. That was the third age longsword. Okay, so what exactly happened for those that don't? I mean, I'm... I'm st- I, uh, I just had a I just had a RuneScape Twitter like the same way a lot of people had RuneScape Twitters. Mm. I got third age long, tweeted it. Next morning, woke up, no more third age long. Fuck. Okay. But uh, like that went like viral or whatever you want to call it on Reddit. And that was the reason you de iron sort of just the whole hack and everything. Yeah, that was when I de ironed and just played as a main and did pet hunting for a while. I see. But uh. <clears throat> Like, for some reason, after that happened, like, it kind of, like, led to me getting a lot of Twitter followers. So, like, I got up to, like, two or 3,000 Twitter followers off that. <laughs> and uh, I just kept using my Twitter, like, a RuneScape Twitter, like, what I made it for in the first place. Like, yeah. a screenshot if I get a cool drop or something. Talk yeah. to people. That's cool. So... And then, uh, so whenever I started streaming, like, I was able to, like, use my Twitter for, like, advertising my stream and stuff. And... My first couple of streams, I was already like 50 to 100 viewers without having to like struggle through sitting at the bottom of the category and hoping someone notices me one day. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a lot more optimal. I, I realize now how important just having a somewhat of a following anywhere else is in starting streaming because yeah. Yeah, and you still see it to this day like a Sinverna, whenever she started streaming, she immediately had a ton of viewers because she had a big Twitter following before him. Yep, yep. It's definitely the way to go. She was able to stream for like a few months and get partner like immediately. Yeah, that's a lot. And I feel like that's kind of similar to how my experience was. Like I got partner like my fourth month of streaming. At what point? And did that you... was uh that was like the old days of partner too, where there wasn't like the affiliate program and oh yeah, there weren't standard like guidelines for meeting the criteria to become partner. You would send in an application and you get an automated response that's a yes or a no. Damn. Oh yeah, there was no such thing as a sub button for affiliates, right? Or did that had had that come out yet? Um I think it came out the month before I got partner actually. Okay. So, at what point did you kind of go full-time streaming? Was it pretty soon after just streaming? Oh uh, yeah, it was partner? pretty it was it was pretty shortly after I got partner. Okay. That's so cool. Just I always just find that <clears throat> so awesome. So my first, uh, my first like four months of streaming, I uh, would just do like short streams after work, like two or three hours, and then uh, being an EMT, I had a schedule where I typically be like be on for four days and then off for four days. So I had like multiple days in a row where I could like try to do like longer streams and stuff, and then I would just like have to disappear for a while, basically. Mm. Did you ever have like a? I don't know. I always find it really interesting the stories that I've heard from other content creators of them going full time. Like, were you nervous at all about doing that, or were you just um, like fucking excited that you just played <clears throat> RuneScape? Yeah, I was super excited to get to play more RuneScape. <laughs> I uh, no reason for it. Mm, I uh, I was still living in, at my uh, at my dad's house at the time, so I w- I wasn't worried about if it failed. Plus, uh, I. Uh, had the safety net of like being able to go back to my old job as an EMT if I needed to. Yeah. Because uh, I left like on really good terms with them, and uh, like they they told me that they would be willing to let me go full time again whenever I wanted to. That's cool. Uh, they they were also hoping I would pick up part time shifts, which I didn't end up doing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I guess it, I guess it wasn't like it was more excited than stress because I had like the safety net of one, I'm not on my own. And two, I uh, had the backup plan. And there's just so much excitement with streaming because you just really don't know where it will go. So it's not like you just know exactly what. I don't know. It's not like it's, it's not like a real set routine. You just really <clears> don't <throat> know what happens every day when you go live. Yeah, it was. Uh, 
Yeah, it was just exciting like that, honestly. Like every single every single day, like it, it was just a different feeling compared to now. Like now it's like I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say it's worse, but it's like every day I pretty much know what to expect yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And whenever whenever I first started, it's like, man, I might get like a really big host today or something. I wonder what's gonna happen. Yeah. No, but definitely, I, I still feel that, but I definitely am with you. And of course, you've been streaming for a couple of years longer than I have. So, yeah, it, it. I feel like any pursuit kind of ends up getting a little bit mundane a bit, even though it's still nice. It's just like, it's not as exciting as it once was. So, yeah, it's just routine. Yeah. Chronologically, you had done your no pillar on stream you had started an iron man and then i just want to kind of drift into chambers and your experience there because that was definitely probably what you're known for most is your tebow grind <laughs> you yeah, know it should be at this point it should be considered your elder mall grind but nobody cares about the goddamn elder mall so it's nobody like... cares about the elder mall <laughs> until the until the hardcore gets like four or five of them then everyone <laughs> loves the elder mall so how was the chambers grind um, and, and oh let me also ask what was the experience for you learning how to solo chambers and everything so uh chambers i uh before i made that iron man like back in like the early inferno days and stuff i had like dabbled around in solos but i was about as clueless as anyone at that point like the extent of my knowledge was doing one to zero with the elder mall <laughs> and uh scouting for like an hour to find mudadal shaman mystics yeah. every <laughs> single raid. <laughs> Just literally get on and like after work and play for like four hours and do like two raids. <laughs> I can love it, dude. But it was fun because like people weren't doing it. Yeah. Like it, it was, it was, it sucked, but it was fun. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so whenever I made the Iron Man, and then I got around to the point where it was ready for chambers, I had to learn how to like actually do solos and not do not just do like one to zero with a bgs or something like that like i wanted to actually learn how to do it mm -hmm. so uh at the time two people like really really helped me uh obviously uh you're not gonna be surprised by this one but tipper kitty oh yep yeah he um would watch my stream daily for probably like two or three months straight and uh thankfully backseat me which uh, a lot of people know i don't like being backseated very much but i love being backseated whenever it's shit that i don't know how to do and it's somebody that knows what they're doing. And yeah, someone who about. most definitely knows how to do it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that was like a big help for me. And then uh, that, it was also the start of my friendship with Puggin. He uh, actually like took like multiple hours out of his day and like came into a raid with me and like would go into phase three on with me and just reset it, show me how to do it, and then let me try and That's just like cool. repeat that shit over and over again. So uh, like. Puggin basically straight up taught me uh, how to do four to one. And was he a streamer at that point? Um, he was starting to stream. Okay. Like literally just starting. That's so cool. You just have like these beasts that just help out. I know. Yeah. I don't really know the whole time frame. I just remember the first person I really saw just beasting out at solos was Hauke. Oh yeah. Just Hauke was always insane yeah, from the sauna. Just built different. I don't know. Just miss the Halky sauna streams. <laughs> I know <never>, they. <laughs> I don't remember those. He, uh, his stream setup was in like a shack out in his backyard. <laughs> and it was like a sauna. Maybe, maybe I do. He was was he actually like using? The he just looked like he was in a okay. sauna. Okay, yeah. It, it yeah. was like a shack. I don't think it was actually a sauna, but it looked like a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> and he would always call it the sauna streams. I think the first time because it was, was whenever it was whenever he would be home from school. Okay, okay, I see. I remember Hauke doing Zami flicking, and this is before I'd ever seen anybody flicking Zami before. Ever. Like, I had seen a little bit of Bandos, but Zami I thought was completely different because I was super newbie at the time. And watching Hauke like, do that was just unbelievable. I was like, what? I feel like it's also unappreciated or underappreciated how, uh, how difficult that was, like, specifically the Zami flicking at the time. Because if you think back to that time period, like very few people actually like thought of the game as like broken down into game ticks the way they do now. We didn't have NPC indicators. We didn't have like tile markers and everything. Didn't have like the game wasn't either. the game wasn't like availably broken down to you like that. Like you had to actually see it like that yourself. 
Yeah. And a, a place like Zami, anyone who's ever done Zami flicking, like the animations are garbage. All the minion attack animations and Zami's attack animations are like delayed animations. Yeah. So awful. if you're trying to use them as like visual cues, it's not going to help you. Like compared to like Bandos, where like all the minions have like a one tick attack animation, it's the exact attack that, or the exact tick they attack on. It's uh, they're all one by one. Grodder has the has the punch, you know. Yep. That Whereas was... Zami's Zami's is like subtle, gets overridden by like his flinching animation all the time. You, oh, like it's not as like Zami's visually awful. friendly as Bandos, and like in my opinion, that made it much harder, especially at that time where the game wasn't as broken down as we see it now. Yep. No, definitely, because like you kind of have to pioneer that on your own. What are you gonna look? Ba what basically, are you gonna look ahead, of time, you know? exactly. ahead of his time. You know, ahead of his time. I mean, I'm still trying to think when is arma flicking gonna i mean i know arma flicking is pretty much useless like there's no real reason to do that but i'm surprised yeah, I mean, arma flicking was never i i know people have there's there's corporal eric videos of it from like 2015 oh really it's just <laughs> yeah i, you I, can I just, probably find them i just swear if you miss one of those three tick uh flicks from kree you're just dead you're taking a 70 to the face like it's so risky yeah doing he, that. Cor corporal eric has videos of him doing like just afk with blowpipe flicking oh okay okay interesting it wasn't it wasn't anything like the exact punch and pot clicking though or flicking mm. it was uh it was just prioritizing like kree flicks and then flicking the minions between kree attacks when you can i see yeah but then like you know then we have exact like doing the red x step under to make kree five tick and having all the minions off tick five tick <laughs> so nuts i really is probably a lot easier to keep up with honestly <laughs> yeah 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 and a lot sure. better results it's crazy how just I don't know. There, God Wars is just solved now. I mean, now we have all these like new items. Like it's, both. It's just them. RuneScape, man. It's just RuneScape at this point. Like people keep finding ways to get better results while putting in less effort. Yeah. Like a. Uh, like I was just talking about how Exact's method for the Kree flicking versus what like a uh, Corporal Eric was doing at that time. Exact's method like half as much effort and probably two or three times better results. You know. Yeah. Uh. Think back to just TOA release recently. The first iteration of the butterfly method was click every single game tick yes. for your bathing. Yes. And now there's like ways to do it where you click two out of five ticks, and people like just so quickly find easier way that easier ways to do things like the nine different Bandos uh, Bofa guiding methods. <laughs> just kept getting easier and easier and easier. Yeah. <laughs> like now it's literally people just, just back have the forth. game so min max at this point. <laughs> It's weird and the craziest thing is thinking back to a time for me personally where i didn't even understand what a tick was i mean i'm talking 2015 <clears throat> like I, learning how to prayer learning how to one tick flick just on like the quick prayers was so insanely difficult for me and i can only imagine how difficult it is for the majority of players that try to get into that kind of stuff it's just like so you think that's like everyone's first introduction to game ticks is like one tick bear flicking i think it must be for the majority of people because that was my unless they're doing like tick manipulation skilling maybe that was my introduction and the thing that made it worse was the servers were fucking garbage and i didn't understand that other worlds were better than others so i would be on like world 302 where the cannon literally is just like going super lag <laughs> mode and i'm trying to one tick flick. Yeah. I'm like i can't get this down like no wonder like it's crazy, like, so many people still don't know that, like, I know. TOA streams have exposed that to me. I know, it's crazy. People will just camp on a world with 1,200 people on it. I'm like... Everyone, um, I guess, I guess, like, logically it would make sense, like, everyone thinks ping is all that matters. Yeah. Or they see a lot of players on the world, and they're like, oh, like, that's where everyone's going, like, that must be a great world, right? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, also, like, RuneScape being, like, a turn-based game, basically. Makes it where, like, ping is it as important as it would be for, like, an FPS? Yeah, I think people do rely on that. It's people, like, out. if I'm streaming late, which I have been a lot recently, I'm on a UK world, people are like, how do you play with 120 ping? It's like... It's not about... 600 thing, it's millisecond thing. intervals. Like, I, it's hard for a human to react in, like, less than 50 milliseconds. It's not going to change anything. Yeah, and what you really want... And the UK worlds are always the best. I mean, just the most consistent, the most... I don't know. They just don't have these weird lag spikes here and there. They're even though you're getting a little bit higher ping, it's way better. Yeah, especially at that time of the night. Mm -hmm. So, Tebow, 
how was that how was grinding for the elusive team of it just never seemed to come oh man it uh it was interesting because like similar to the May somewhat like it it was like something that started to like kind of consume my life a little bit and it was like man I just want it so bad why why can't I get it <laughs> but at the same time like even in the moment I understood that it was like helping my stream a lot and that I was having a lot of fun doing it yeah so it was kind of a especially when I got it it was like bittersweet like I was like super super happy to have it and like be able to use it and it was like honestly a lot of publicity at the time as well which uh, like carried on over for a couple of weeks, but like a month later, like the hype has died down and it's like, I wanna go do more chambers. Yeah. And then it puts me in a situation like I'm in right now, like I'm not bored of TOA yet, <clears throat> even though I have everything. So I've still been doing TOA on my last few streams and uh, all day long, it's like, why are you doing this? You have other chores. <laughs> not the chores to do, man, what the fuck? Yeah. Quit enjoying the game, do something that makes you hate it. Yeah. On to the next one. Yep. Yeah, no, but it is really, st it's strange that that kind of happens as a streamer. Like, you really like want to Iron get something. Man. It's the Iron Man, man. It really is. I mean, you saw it with Ari Slash. Ari Slash really wanted a Tebow. Obviously, his story was a little different because he's the hardcore and he just doesn't really want to do much else because it's just a safe death at Chambers. But yeah, once he got his Tebow, I mean, he was just so butthurt that he couldn't get a Tebow. As soon as he gets it, it's like, yeah, I'm bored. I'm kind of just. Yeah. Like, you need that. You need something. And honestly, going for a Tebow, I think, is on... That is probably the best grind to go dry on. I know that sounds, like, horrible to people that are still missing a Tebow. But I really do think it's just one of those great grinds that you get to just enjoy. You get into the flow state of it. You just see so much improvement over time. And unfortunately, you don't get to use the Tebow for all those kills, obviously. But, like, something just... Yeah just want it so bad and tebow's so iconic so much more iconic than even the shadow mm. i think or oh yeah for me uh for me like i would say the biggest like contributing factor for enjoying the game is improvement yep like that's what i've been doing with toa recently that's why i'm not ready to leave toa is because i still see improvement and i'm still enjoying it yeah and that's how chambers was for me at the time especially it's like every single day trying to get better at it let's skip over to toa uh because it is definitely the newest release and a hot topic and you have i just gotta say been absolutely killing it at toa i just cannot i did one 500 <laughs> and i almost died at the end too i just got lucky that my shadow hit but uh dude 575s what the fuck like that just kefries take 13 minutes and that's like an average kefri like oh man i uh yesterday dude i uh I'm about to send you a screenshot of a 575 I did. Show me. I'll show it to the people on YouTube. I don't even know what happened, Woo! man. Okay. I, uh, it was like before. I, it was before I started my stream. I don't even know what happened. So, oh, this is like a my my average Kefries are like 13 minutes. Yeah, 927 for those listening. 927 Kefri and a 575, which is literally yeah three over three minutes fast it was so crazy that i was like i have to take a screenshot of the board because no one's gonna believe it they're gonna be like you didn't have medic on <laughs> so i have to show that it ended as a 575 in over 40 minutes holy shit so let me ask you uh because i did see just like a couple days ago now you're just going for those speedy 500s and yeah that was just something i was doing last night it was fun though okay but what do you think of like the rates, I guess? Uh the rates of doing 575s or like are 575s the <clears> best <throat> do you think for items wise just if you were to get constant completions? I mean, I'm assuming Probably not. Really? Probably not. What do you think uh, would be? If you're comparing to like a 540 setup, um uh, at least something that I was running a lot and No Monkey also runs a lot. Uh the difference would be medic and quiet bears. So quiet bears can add some inconsistency. But uh, Quiet Bears is pretty manageable. Medic is just, it's not going to be worth the extra time that it adds. It adds like, I would say, seven minutes on average. Okay, so would you think... For 15, for 15 points or 15 levels? Yeah, that's probably not worth it. I so just... I would think, I would honestly think 560 would probably be meta in a perfect world where someone could be 100% consistent with it. Okay. What's the but, best uh, part mistakes of... mistakes are super punishing, especially if you're trying to min-max. 
Yeah. The hardest part? But yeah, Medic definitely is just super... I, I understand it's engaging, but it's like, god damn, that just takes so long. Yeah, what is, what is the best I actually like part Medic. It's fun, but that probably goes back to the, the self-improvement part. Mm-hmm. You say what's the hardest part of a 575? So what's like the funnest part of a 575? Oh, the and what's the worst part? Like what's just the part where you dread? You're just like, oh, I gotta do this. Uh, the most fun part, at least. Okay, two most fun parts. P4 Warden always going to be like the most fun parts, like the final stand and mm -hmm. super intense and fast. And it's like the make or break moment if you get rewarded or not. So like that's always gonna be the most fun, mm -hmm. but I really enjoy doing Zebek with the quiet bears and doing the melee, uh, the melee baiting, like stepping in yeah. and out every six sticks. It's a uh, it's fun to like keep track of it while trying to do zero bear and managing that with your five tick attack cycle. Yeah. So it's almost like a it's almost like an inverse like bandos flicking. That's cool. It's so, like yeah. super similar to that, except you're always one bear point and one HP. Yeah, I, I just love that you're doing all this crazy stuff and you're doing like the little, you're not even using your quick prayer orb, you're just doing like the manual flicks. I just, that's where the game actually gets pretty addicting, those little prayer switches and stuff. I, I get really addicted to flicking at Sarah. I'm not it makes it, it yet, it, but it's just fun. Just It honestly makes it easier to like keep track of the game ticks because it's so easy to zone out and just lose your sense of time if you're just sitting there one tick flicking. True. Because then you're not thinking about it anymore. You're just trying to keep a rhythm going. And then whenever you break that to do something else, you lose that rhythm immediately. What do you think about Akka? Uh, Akka is... Most people probably say it's the hardest room in the raid, but it's also... I'm going to be biased. I have a shadow. I butterfly it. Like, it's <laughs> yes. it's one of the most fun rooms in the raid. Dude, doing 300s... Akka just... It sucks without a shadow because yes, butterfly is. sucks. Like, your <laughs> DPS is so bad. And he just rips you through prayer, like, chip damage. Yeah. Now, Akka without a but shadow... But as soon as you get a shadow, it's, like, the most fun room. Exactly. It's so, like, soothing. It's, like, it, it's like solo home. <laughs> It really is. Dude, doing 300s, by the way, like, because I, I learned Butterfly doing my 500, and I was really happy. I'm glad, you know what, I got to just say, I'm glad they came out with the, the fan kit that was a 500, because it really did force me to learn a lot of things that I just... Oh, yeah, motivator, man. Yeah. And, dude, oh, my God, doing a 300, uh, Akka is just so quick. I mean, you're getting that room done in under three minutes, just, like, in, out, basically, just Butterfly. And I'm making mistakes, too, but, like... Dude, the shadow is so busted. <laughs> You're like three. Yeah, I'll watch. Shadow. I'll watch Smork speedrunning uh, TOA going for the expert record, and he'll be like disappointed if he has like a two fifty five Aka. I'm like, <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> I'm like, hey, sub six Aka, let's go. Yeah. Oh my god. So, w are there any improvements that Jagex could have made to a TOA? Do you think? Oh, by the way, I also want to ask this: Is five seventy five a good ending point? Like, is that is do you think it's challenging enough or do you think it, there should have been more invocations that made shit like really crazy uh overall i'm really happy with the difficulty of it but a couple things i don't like i first off uh don't like that it's like an arbitrary restriction the only reason that you can't truly do max difficulty is because of not having the dps to hit the time limits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh It'd be cool if they were like, I don't know what to call them, like extra invocations maybe that could be used in place of the time invocations once you hit a certain point. Like, uh, let's say, let's say like, I can't think of an example invocation right now, but let's say they add this extra invocation, it's a mechanical invocation. It's worth 25 levels, but you can only use it at 575 to get to 600 in place Ooh. of a time invocation. That's... So it's like some extra hard challenge, that and it cool. gives you the extra 25 to get to 600 in place of a time invocation. Yeah, that would be really cool. What would you think of that uh, mechanic? Did oh, man, I've seen uh, I've seen a lot of ideas going around, especially in No Monkey Stream. I've been watching him a lot recently. Uh, they have ideas daily. A lot of it involves uh, the phantoms during P3. Because a lot, a lot of people agree, especially as you get to higher invocations, like... P3 becomes a longer part of the fight and nothing ever changes about it. Yeah. You're talking It's always right? the same whether you're, yeah, whether you're on entry mode or doing 575, mm -hmm. P3 is essentially the same on wardens all the time. 
Yeah, what is up with that? <clears throat> that uh, uh, like I don't think Zebak ever speeds up, does it? Or, or if you do a level, his uh, his attack rate stays the same, but the uh, the actual projectile speeds up, which lowers your reaction time. Okay. Also, I just thought about this. What if you do max out your five seventy five, whatever? And then there's a way to add the additional 25 or even, I mean, I, I would say this would be way more than 25 points. I would even say like 75 of something where you do max it out. You get an extra 75 or something to make everything level six. Yeah. Is that going going past 600 would be cool, but I don't want to get banned for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? Let's just ask. What are your thoughts on that? I sure oh, man. So, so much respect for new type. He, he knew going into it, he'd get banned. He's the one that I, uh, did the 770. Yeah. Yeah. So so much respect, man. <laughs> the, the video the video is a work of art too. He took like an hour plus raid and condensed it into like a 10 minute video <laughs> without missing a beat and has like nice little edits in there. Every <clears throat> everything's informative. Like he's telling he's showing you like how many mistakes he makes, which is almost zero. Jesus Christ. Keeping track of like how many times he uses his Karis throughout the whole thing. What a beast. Um Anyone who struggles on Aka and Rage, which is almost everyone, yep. uh, go watch that video. Like he gets hit by one orb on a 770. Like he, he's on that face for like five minutes and gets hit one time. Jesus. I mean, you know, there has been a lot of people whining, me included, of the Aka phase. Um, it's just so different than any other piece of content we've ever had in the game, and it feels incredibly punishing. But it all is avoidable technically you just have to have a galaxy brain <laughs> in order to yeah in some of those spots but it is all it's avoidable. just hard you yeah. get asked about it a lot like it, it's just difficult yep i'm trying to think i mean I, uh, I, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing like yeah. it almost feels like it should have been an immigration yeah oh yeah that a hundred percent maybe not the phase it. itself but like maybe like the base difficulty should have been like half as difficult as it is right now mm -hmm. and then the invocation makes it the current difficulty yeah it is cool having something that's difficult it just feels incredibly overwhelming simply because th there can just be a ton of white in just the corner you're in and it just feels unbelievably yeah. stressful. And it's kind of it's kind of a hard spot because it's like okay my, my stance on it if you're like trying to do like 500 plus and you're complaining about it then it's the classic skill issue yeah because <laughs> like you're trying to do something really hard to get a prestigious reward the fan kit mm -hmm. and you're complaining that's really hard but on the other hand there's the average or casual players that are doing like sub 300 and that phase is still insanely hard for them yeah and like they can't even keep up with it drinking brews with how much damage they're taking you know yeah so it's like do we want to balance it to them or do we want to keep it balanced for the super difficult ones? And then on top of that, there's the whole debate about if the raid is already like easy enough at the base difficulty. Mm -hmm. Like even considering that one super hard part, like if you, if you take that away, then what's what's left in the difficulty? That's true. Everyone's already, already talking about how accessible it is and how like so many drops are coming in the game. Yeah, and to be fair, the Aka phase, it's just our obsession with trying to get it done without losing any ticks that makes it just oh yeah annoying. you you have to slow down exactly that's really what it came down because it, it is always possible to dodge it is not always possible to dodge and five take your attacks yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah that's when it starts getting incredibly frustrating when you're just trying to save every tick and you're like why am i like why don't i just step back for a second and take a breather because that i mean you really can just wait as long as you need and wait uh and then hit so uh, i brought up a suggestion in your stream even of Maybe there could be an invocation of making the white balls go diagonal. That would be an invocation. And then just the base would be having them only go north to south and east to west. Um, personally, I think the diagonals are really the hardest part of the entire thing. Because it's just so hard to tell. Kind yeah, of they're, not, they're not as obvious. Yeah. So those diagonals are a bitch. Everything else, I mean, just the ones that just go straight across. Uh those are pretty nice. And I feel like that would actually be a lot more engaging and a lot more fun, personally. I don't know. Obviously, it would definitely drastically reduce the difficulty of it. But, I don't know. Those diagonals are just so wonky. It's so hard to tell when they're about to hit you. Yeah. As long as it's, like... I feel like at that point, it would have to be, like, a 20-point invocation mm -hmm. with how much it would change the difficulty. 100%.
I saw Mulgo Kirby's clip of that glitched Zebak. Oh, the Zebak waves. <laughs> just flinging everything. I was like, that'd be a fun invocation. It. I feel like. Yeah, I guess we were talking originally about uh, the idea of uh, like what new invocations would be. Like imagine be like imagine situations like that during like P3 Warden. Oh, or having yeah. like all four phantoms on P3 Warden. Yeah, that would be rough. That would be incredibly rough, but yeah, I would love to see that because watching that kind of shit would just be a yeah a thrill. I think the the main concern should be like keeping the ability to do it like flawless, basically, mm-hmm. like make it playable. But they they could really up the difficulty with stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Because right now, like I, I know a lot of people aren't uh, interested in like pursuing like super high TOA invocation because it's not like. I'm going to say it's not as, like, focused on the actual room mechanics as much as, like, TOB, for example, mm-hmm. where, like, your main focus is, like, always the room mechanics, basically. Yeah. Uh, high invocation TOA is survivability and supply conservation. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of prayer flaking, unless you want to bring, like, no switches and have your full inventory be prayer. Yeah, but then you're just doing horrible DPS and you're probably going to get way more tilted. Yeah, like if you want to do it fast, you have to you have to supply your, or you have to conserve your supplies a lot. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Which like I I enjoy the min maxing of it, but yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And you make it just I mean it's crazy. You and others can make things just look so easy. I mean, you doing Kefri. Make and it I, look easy. I, I still die a lot. Let's get let's get that straight. <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean it's just I mean it's incredible. It almost feels easy. impossible not to. Yeah. Like it, it it's it's. You have to go so long without making mistakes. I know. And it's just like so many rooms are so dragged out. I mean, Zebak for me, like I wasn't really, um, I don't know. I wasn't efficiently range potting and stuff before. But when I was doing my 500, I just drink a normal range pot before I went in. And like, dude, those Zebaks were sometimes taking nine minutes. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Like, hurry up. <laughs> hurry up. Like, it just gets old. Um, So I that's a little bit of the stuff I don't really like but that is really what makes it tough it's just like okay don't make a single mistake for an hour yeah it's like a it's like a stamina to us yeah it really is um but you're right about like make maybe making wardens difficult more difficult and adding like the other wardens as well and just making things seem a lot more intense rather than just like dragged out like we were saying earlier, like that's the part to me, especially on the warden fight, which is the final boss fight. That's the part that just stands out as like, all right, let's get it over with already. Uh, yeah. Phase three. Like whenever, whenever you first turn on insanity and you first have like the super fast floor, it's like, oh my god, this is crazy. But then after you do it ten, twenty, four hundred times, you uh, it just it's so repetitive. So it's like nothing changes on insanity. Like, if you were doing the Warden and you were doing, like, a, an entry level, like, 70 or whatever it is yeah. with just the Warden invocations on, mm-hmm. like, phase three would be the exact same except for taking less time. Okay, what about this? Super insanity. Extreme insanity. It's another one that Warden attacks one tick faster and it can do anything. Like, it, it can choose whatever side. It can do multiple sides over and over and over. Uh, I can do the middle over and over and over. It can just kind of decide randomly what it's about to do. Do you think that would be fun? Or do you think that would just be, like, stupid? <laughs> like, just insanely difficult. So you always have to react? You always, like, you basically <clears throat> have to be standing in the back row because you would have to have that additional tick to see. Uh, you don't have to have mm. the additional tick, but, like, you would definitely want it. I feel like that's something that I'm, I I don't know how I would feel about it until I actually played it. Yeah. I think that would actually be kind of I feel of like it'd be kind of just, yeah. just, like, him hitting, like the same side over and over and you're about to like move over but you just can't and it's one tick faster so what is it right now is it like every three or four ticks yeah i think it's three tick okay i think overclock two is four tick okay yeah if it was two tick and it could just switch whenever it wanted that would be insane that i like the idea of like at 20 percent and like after the last set of skulls Mm -hmm. what if instead of having like that last little shuffle phase where you're doing the the same old ground shuffle all the way down to five percent and then the hill what about at 20 percent? it goes straight to half the floor is gone the lightning is out the uh the phantoms are speeding up like the the enrage phase starts at 20 percent, and then once you get it down to five percent where it does that heal and it heals up it automatically goes down to the last row Ooh, see 
You have to spend that long in the last row. Yeah, that last row. The last row, I don't think it's always possible to dodge everything. Is that correct? Or is it always possible? Because I um, swear, like, sometimes you'll get, like, four black circles all at the same tick. And it's just like, whoa, like I, I think you could potentially move over, but it would be like... I think it might always be possible. I've never seen the entire row. If it's always uh, possible, there, that's cool. I just don't the lightning know. is every three ticks, I want to say. So you would have two ticks to move. So unless unless you've ever seen five in a row, that would be the only time that's impossible. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that. I, I don't know if I've ever seen five in a row. I've definitely seen four in a row, but you can move for two ticks and get out of that. Yeah, I think what would actually be cool as well is... It if... becomes impossible once you lock yourself in a combat tick. Yes, and it would lock yourself if you're on the very edge and there's... Yeah, it, it's just like Aka. Yeah. It, I think it's possible to do it like every time with zero damage, minus like quiet pair ship damage, of course. But you'd have to lose ticks here and there. Yeah, not, not while five ticking. Yep, okay. I was thinking, okay, what if after 20%, you had the you had the black circles spawning but slower and you still had to dodge the waves as well and then after like the whole like six percent or five percent or whatever it gets to then it's <clears throat> so instead of like three tick lightning you have like four tick lightning while the wind yeah, is still they... like slamming the floor yeah something like that just but but then again that would feel like the more intense part so maybe that doesn't work out like yeah. you want it to get continually more intense i don't know i guess it just depends like Baba, for example, once you're on that floor shuffle part, like you don't have to act, ever actively dodge the Baba rocks. They they just naturally fall behind you mm -hmm. because you're going with the Warden's attacks anyways. So like that that mechanic almost feels pointless. Yeah, that's true. Because you like, okay, yeah, like you I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna it. lie and say I've never messed up and been hit, been hit by it. Like my my guilt my guilty one is like whenever i finish the skulls and i run back to the middle yep. then i get hit by it <laughs> yep, yep. but once you're in that warden like yeah, attack it, cycle with the insanity you have you to never want get hit to get by hit it. but to get hit by it yeah yeah you know, for sure yeah i'm surprised that uh i don't think those ever shoot down faster right like i don't think kefri's ever get sped up to like meteor down a little bit quicker do they because i know in the actual kefri fight they shoot down really fast but not at wardens I thought they did, but uh, they, maybe I, they I have. Do. I've never used a leveled up Kefri on the warden because okay. whenever I started leveling up for going high invocation, I uh, switched to Baba. swapped to Zebit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I feel like Baba's follow tick faster, but those I definitely can tell you for have sure. to. I think Kefri's are slower. Like, <clears throat> yeah, I think that is the case because Kefri's have always felt way easier to dodge. Yeah. Except for aerial assault. <laughs> Oh yeah, the aerial assault. I mean, I don't know. I definitely prefer Akka and Kefri on the wardens, but only if Akka is. Well, actually, never mind. I take it back. I actually do like Akka more now, even with the change. Because initially, when they had, I think like a couple weeks after TOA release, they made it so Akka on wardens actually does kind of switch randomly. But it would get to the point where it was switching without even attacking it would just yeah it would do it like five or six times in a row <laughs> yeah. it's such a mind hook and i was like okay i don't know where we're off or we're just gonna tank it but at least i just dodged like five attacks it's funny though when i started using uh zebek and baba i was like so nervous about it at first because i had only used kefri and aka yep. but i was like starting exactly. to want to push high invocation i was like i gotta use aerial assault yep and i started doing zebek and baba and my immediate reaction is why was i afraid of this yeah, it's literally easier. You like especially with no quiet bears, like you take no damage from Zebek. Yeah, no, that, that's whereas Aka, like you're having to brew with like every 15 seconds because you got hit 15s over and over again. I'm just surprised Aka doesn't even have a some sort of visual indicator of what it's about to shoot out. It's just weird. Yeah, that was another thing too. Like you were talking about how it changed like five or six times in a row. I would just give up and leave a prayer on. <laughs> No, because well, I really think I mean that is that's not broken to add a visual indicator. I'm sorry, you said you like Aka better. I do like it better, but only because I'm running super easy 300s now, where it's just every three. I just mm. I just count. Three. I don't even have to. Okay, like, no stay like, vigilant. Okay. Yeah, even with stay vigilant though, it's a lot easier now because it can't do the whole switch, 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 switch. You just yeah. It now just, that you mention it, I think that was like my reasoning for using it too. Because when I switched, when I stopped using it, it, was whenever they made it where Stay Vigilant actually affects the fandom. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice now, just because Aka attacks so slow, and whenever he skips an attack, like it's just a free like, I swear eight ticks or something where you just have to do nothing. 
Yeah. So I kind of like that about it. And Kefri's and, bombs. Yeah, the Kefri bomb is like easier to dodge. Mm -hmm. Baba, you uh, you really can't dodge it. You have to you have to think about where it's gonna fall. Like I, I use the game sound of it falling oh, yeah. to help me. That shit's tough. And when you're on the final row, like you have to think about like you're battling. Like if I'm going <laughs> one east. And then I go one east again. I can't go one west after that. I have to go two west. Yep. Watching you die at the end of that yeah. one because of that getting rock double bouldered. Just, just so sad to see. Just like <sighs> it's it, it just falls apart so quickly. Yeah. I mean that was about to be my 500. I got hit like a 50 something to the rock, and I was like, I'm dead. But look when my shadow hit. Oh yeah, I've had ones like that where I made the same mistake and actually won just yeah. because of the shadow like rolling big on that last <laughs> hit. It's like thank God. Oh yeah. So, it's super hard though. Like I, like we were talking about originally. Like mm -hmm. I, I think an invocation, like an ex, like a an extended or upgraded insanity, where you have a lot more time on that last row, would be pretty good. That would be kind of fun. And, and, and again, assuming that it is possible with perfect play to dodge everything, I think that's perfect. Um, it reminds me of all. Honestly, even if you can't dodge everything, like if it if it's unlikely enough to get one that you can't dodge, like. 20 damage from it's not going to throw away the run i just like the idea of not having any supplies and being like 20 hp and being yeah. able to successfully do it without i mean but you would just have to miss tick so the fosani treatment <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much um i also like uh how ohm like ohm head phase everything is dodgeable and it's just like not ohm's attacks though I, I mean, guess, I mean, you technically you can at the cost zeros. of DPS. Exactly. But yeah. I just like that idea of like you're one HP and you can get through the full head phase if you just are patient. The emergency card. Yeah. <laughs> I. It just sucks when Ulm is uh, unscuffed and you're just like, holy shit. Like you literally have oh, yeah. that like split second to react to every shadow. That's not. What do you think? Just the extra that, difficulty automatically. Is that appropriate uh, to have in the game? That's my first question, I guess, because some people actually like. It's such it. a confusing concept, and I think to this day, and no one even knows exactly why it happens. I mm -hmm. think the going theory is that it has something to do with the amount of instances open on our world, which is ever increasing every day, especially when we get like a new raid. Yeah. Um, it's it's at the point where throughout the course of like one ohm fight, it'll change like four or five times on you. <laughs> So it's like it'll change mid. It's really confusing. Twice. It's another it's another thing to keep track of, and yeah. someone learning especially is going to be really confused how they dodged this crystal and then the very next crystal hit them, even though they did the same exact thing. Yep. It's it's a super confusing concept. Like, I'm not going to call it a game breaker because you can like learn how to deal with it, and it does add like a tiny bit of like I don't even know if I want to call it like extra skill gap because you don't really like play anything differently it's just something to think about mm -hmm. no it definitely adds a little bit of complexity but i just would mm -hmm. definitely rather it always be scuffed it's so yeah, much yeah and in a, in a perfect world they would like always have it have the one tick delay yeah i like that for uh for those crystals just because it is so much nicer to play with especially if you're not like zoomed out to the moon mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on adding adrenalines to the main game like the potions yeah oh god no we got the ring, man. I know. I'm just. Uh, I'm curious. I, I would. I would prefer getting. A, getting a form of overloads before something like that. Like salts in the like, in the real game. I, some not not salt. God, no, man. Come on. I was uh, okay. So you know like when next came come out, out, like something crazy bus is gonna come out in the next couple. When years. next came out, I had the idea of using Nile shards to make a make make an overload that can be used like in the entire game. But it's not like a 120 overload. It's not a 125 overload. It's like 118, 112, 109. Okay. Like the current max boost mm -hmm. outside of raids, I suppose. And it just works the same as a standard overload. It does 50 damage, heals 50 afterwards, and boosts boost to the current maxes. To be honest, I think, and I know this will be busted, but I really do think we are at the point where we could make it so like all things go up to 120 potentially but again it doesn't need it's to come, just like, such a year. big boost for range and mage it is and with but... the shadow especially as soon as that happens yeah. like you will use the shadow <laughs> everywhere you already yeah. almost do yeah now i just want it simply be just to like sh 
streamline everything. Rip the band aid off. You just want to rip the band aid off. It's going to happen eventually. I'm like, dude, it, we've been at 112 range forever, and we're using normal ranging. There's not even such thing as super ranging pots yet. Like, can we just get those? Like, I would be okay if super ranging pots came out and they were 118 and uh, some crate. And again, these potions would be expensive. I want them to be expensive. I want them to be like. Okay, you're only gonna. I mean, every, obviously, every end game player is gonna be using them at all times. Yeah, it's not gonna deter people. And look at everyone using their 60k sand fuse. Exactly. I just want, but I want it or to two be, extra bear points. <laughs> exactly. I want it, it. Sometimes even one, isn't it? Or I don't know. Probably. Um. But yeah, I just want things to be a little bit more streamlined. I kind of, I don't like the meta with the imbued heart. So your whole thing of overload, just having a 109 constant, that would just be. I hate using preserve. Fuck preserve. It'd be a boost over the imbued heart because you don't get to keep that 109 very long. <laughs> Yeah, it just goes away instantaneously sometimes because you have to like base it off of your uh, little sixty cent, sixty uh, second counter. My thing about it is, uh, I guess much like RS three, we're kind of going in the direction of like Switchscape. Like you see all these crazy TOA inventories, like people will speed around three hundreds. They don't have Bruce. <laughs> nope. And it's like, uh, so like that works really well for like raids, and you see it in chambers all the time too. Like people have super min max inventories, mm -hmm. and. Uh, a big part of that is like the overloads adding like the quality of life for that where like you don't have to worry so much about like reboosting your stats yeah so it is time do you think for overloads i i'm Even personally pro overloads i know it's i know that it's gonna have like differing opinions i don't i, I like the idea of overloads i do too. i just I, I don't think we're ready for like 120 range 120 mage that really would just uh, the main reason that's a bad idea is because it just fucks over melee so hard because, like, melee would be getting, like, hardly anything in range is all. Because the way I see it, like, stat boosts like that is cool. But that's taking away some massive upgrades that we could get from, like, just direct gear. Yeah, that's true. Which leads to, like, future content. That's, like, that's raids. That's the DPS boost we can get from raids 4 and have massive power creep from it. Yeah. Or the potion can make number go up a little bit. That's true. Okay, uh, maybe we could wait until, like, raids 4 to get, like, super ranging pots. Yeah, magic. Yeah, super magic pots. We don't have super magic. We just have magic pots. <clears throat> we have. Oh wait, wait, wait. What's the ancient brews? Battle mage. Uh, ancient brews are like. Is it goes? Do those? I think they give you a little bit of prayer points, and they give you magic level. Is that one of six magic it boosts you up to from ninety nine? It's not as high as a heart, but it's more than a battle mage yeah. and magic pot. Interesting. I yeah. think they give you a little prayer, don't they? Uh, probably. Whatever they do, they're more useful than the Minifight potion. Yeah, I just never use Yeah, the Minifight potion. I, I still barely Let us know combine like Nile Shards and Minifight potion and like Super Combat and just Bastion and knows. Battle Mage. Yeah. Be able to only make like two potions per inventory, like at your bank. Just just so many <laughs> ingredients. You gotta you, run to like four different banks per potion. And you have to take like twenty damage every time you mix it, just get a little mini explosion in your face. It's so potent. You get a one dose afterwards. Yeah. I I mean you honestly. As, as annoying as that would be to have a one one dose potion suck by the way i already realized oh, that yeah, after they that. came out with those in uh, the ambrosia <laughs> yeah, like it's just stupid like we don't got time for this like just make i i don't know i'm a huge fan of four doses at all times just make them super crazy you know expensive whatnot i like four doses apparently i think rs3 has six dose potions don't they yeah flasks yeah what do you think about those in old school um the day old school decides to do that is the day that like the entire game is like announcing that uh one take flicking should no longer be a thing. <laughs> the day they do that is whenever like that stops being like a like a skill gap thing. Yeah. By the way, did you wake up this morning but when uh, Red X is was or I guess I guess Red X is still broken right now. I think it's getting fixed tomorrow. Yeah, I saw the post about it. Yeah. People were actually freaking out. They thought it was actually like patched for good initially. I wasn't yeah, supposedly uh, they're fixing it like in the morning or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that always. I gets... really don't know how I feel about that one. It uh, there are some things with it that are cool, like doing like two to one on like Cerberus and stuff like that. Uh, all the God Wars kiting methods. Mm -hmm. I uh, I don't really like Red X mechanics at Next very much, but that's not so much to do with the actual mechanics as much as like what people do with it because it's counterproductive like people do like nine tick stalling with it whereas like you don't even need a red x to do a five tick stall yeah like they they like hurt them hurt their own dps on yeah, it yeah yeah so like I, I just think it's misused there but i don't think it's like necessarily a bad thing 
I th- at Baba specifically, uh, mm-hmm. probably common opinion. I don't like that it's essentially necessary at like 500 plus for consistency. I think but they can. Yeah, no, I don't think that has anything to do with red X. It's literally red X like like significantly lower DPS. But yeah, they it, really it's just the cards you dealt though. at this point. Yeah, I like I like red X. I was doing Thermi yesterday on a task, and I just love being able to just click the door and not. Ha- I don't know when. If Red X were to get removed, it's like, I just got to, like, rotate my camera a lot and do some weird shit. Yeah, they I, could, like, yeah. they could honestly just, like, drastically reduce the damage that Baba does through prayer. That's, Spawn the that's monkeys it. twice as often. Make him throw the rocks, like, three or four times as often as he does right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think just fixing Baba, hitting through prayer super fucking hard would be, they'll kind of, like, fix it, honestly. I put a lot more emphasis on those mechanics instead of like Baba actually hitting you with the damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask was Ambrosias in the game. Those need to come out, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Dude, Ambrosias on week of release when you were getting like four two dose Ambrosias in like a, like a fucking 150 or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, why do I need any other supplies at all? Like, what you just whenever you drop to like 99 hp just re-ambrosia you got eight doses of it like so you know the uh you know the like kegs with the potions at nightmare zone yeah 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 they can just put one of those right outside lumbridge castle with ambrosia <laughs> just drink as you wish fill up your flasks yeah. Yeah. that way whenever you die you just respawn get more ambrosia before you go back. <laughs> yeah i i do like that uh they can kind of do things in a little i don't know secluded area like raids just have some fun things like yeah loads and salts and Ra- raids everything. are raids are so good for being able to like test power Spirit. creep stuff yeah Spirit. it's not going to break the entire game exactly i love that shit ambrosias do feel good when you just really are just taking a beating you just need something you're panicking you know just click it done we're good I don't even know, man. I haven't used an Ambrosia in like a month. <laughs> I know, I know. No, I went back to throw because I was I took basically a two week break from raids as soon as like the five hundred challenge came out. I was like, oh, I gotta go fucking do this, like, but I didn't want to, and so I just took a break in general because I set up my five hundred invocation already, and I didn't want to like mess with it. I didn't want to go back down to three hundred, but yeah, as soon as you go back to using an Ambrosia, it's like okay, this is just so easy, so oh, yeah. easy. It's like that's honestly like how the entire raid is. Like I remember. Whenever I first started learning 500s and then I went back and did a 300, it felt like a joke. And yep. then uh, <laughs> yep. lately I've been doing a lot of 575s. I got up to 50 completions on the 575s. And yesterday I went and did like some fast 500s like we were talking about. <laughs> or 500. tried to go fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it, it just felt like a completely different raid almost. Like I got like a 33 minute. Did you really? 33? Uh, yeah. Jesus, yeah, it was dude. 33.18 on the overall time. Jesus Christ, that is uh, fucking fast. Ruru was actually, uh, he's, an Obliv- he's an Oblivion guy. He was trying to get a sub-30 uh, last week. He got one tick off of it with the uh, with the 30-minute invocation on, so wow. it went down to a 460. But, still, but he was running it with wow. the 30-minute invocation so that he could do it with no path invocations apart from walk the path. Holy fuck, that is insane. If you could... But the downside is if you don't get that time limit... It's- or yeah, sixty, huge reduction. Yeah, I was doing. Uh, I was doing this one with a forty-minute timer. I just sent you. Let's see this. And like, it was fun, but it felt like completely different to like my first time. I was learning the five hundreds. Like, it was like a similar feeling to going back to three hundreds afterwards. Yep. That is cra- Yeah, that is crazy fast. Mine was like over an hour. I'm pretty sure because I was just like taking my time. But it's cool. Um. Okay. So. Adicon uh, a while ago was kind of just, I mean, this is like when Raids was first kind of being released. I mean, him, I think he was kind of like the main voice behind it of just making it so <clears throat> you want to run high invocations. Because I swear a week of release, everyone is just running 150s because like, why not? Oh, yeah. I do like the fact I wonder that if they're ever going to like tell us like what the, what raids, the actual raids were are. at that point. Oh, yeah. What they were and now what they are. I want to yeah. know what they are because like 575s, what do you think they are? Like rate wise for a purple. Uh God, I I would guess like one in six or one in seven, but it's it's just a guess. 
Uh, personally, I've done 50. I have 12 purples from them. So that's like one in four for me, but I don't think they're one in four. Yeah, that's fucking nuts, though. Because, yeah, didn't you I mean, say... It'd be cool if they were. You said noob type or something had also done like 50 or something and only had... Yeah. Uh, last I heard, he had like 30 done with like uh, four purples or five purples. Okay. So he was getting like a one in six or so. Okay. Uh, that was also like two or three weeks ago. He's probably done more, but uh, he's on a little vacation right now. <laughs> Of, of his own free will right like he's just yeah he's, he's celebrating a 770 <laughs> as he should as he should oh god yeah i don't know i i feel bad in a way for people uh you know like i know seven i i don't know who the other two people were that got permed i am not trying to say i know what's best because i obviously don't know all the details and stuff but you know, there is a lot of arguable stuff that's kind of gray line, like, is this bug abuse or something? But I think with the invocations of, like, literally turning on something that... It's pretty blatant. Everybody would argue. Invocations. Like, you could, you, that's, yeah, that's clearly bug abuse, but... Yeah. Because if you look at someone using it, like, they understood that they were able to do this to make the raid mechanically less difficult, but give the same reward. Mm -hmm. Like, that was, that was the entire function of it. Yep. And to just continually run them for... There's no, like, inadvertent abuse of it. Like, like you knew what you were doing. Yeah. I uh, I don't know. That's been, like, a really common thing this week, especially, like, people asking about that. Uh, I guess we don't really know, like, any of their, like, entire, like, account situations. I keep exactly. hearing that Seven had a prior botting, uh, botting offenses that he had, like, previous bans for. Yeah, he had a botting moderate a year ago and a mute as well a year ago so I, I i would just assume that's why he got a perm that's what i'm thinking too and i know like reddit and all their moms are witch hunting for coxie to get permed <laughs> i know and they keep oh. oh my god man they keep like the amount of times i read this week coxie has a history of uh <laughs> massive bug abuse and <laughs> cheats at every opportunity i'm just like <laughs> no, just random he shit. accidentally ahk all him he accidentally AHK'd all of his prayers and outed himself as an AHK herb cleaner one time on a different account <laughs> like two know. years ago. <laughs> and it's like, uh, yeah, he, he's 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 running the, the dupe market and everything, man. Yep, yep, yep. Now, people just love, love. It's the narrative, man. Yeah, the narrative. Love to jump on the bandwagon and just start hating on people. Like, dude, I personally... And I'm getting <clears> the same shit where it's like, why are you defending... Co I'm like, I'm not defending anybody. I'm just stating how I feel. Like, I don't... Like, you don't need to absolutely hate Coxie for just fucking running yeah. some... I mean, honestly, the reason I bring it up, though, is uh, because, like, although, although Seven's ban might have been harsh, I'm assuming he was burned because of his previous offenses. And he was literally tweeting J-Mods being like, why Coxie no perm? Yeah, that's crazy. Like, out, like, throwing someone else under the bus, and it's like, come on, man. Like, why do you, why do you have to go out like that? Yeah, that's a little weird. It's like just he's I'm assuming in such an emotional state about the whole thing. You just like can't like think clearly. It's like getting in trouble and then like snitching on your little brother. I know. Yeah. Hoping weird. that you get in less trouble or something. Yeah. It's really weird because, OK, you've clearly just admitted that like there's no help for you. You're getting permed at night. <laughs> yeah, like, what's the point of throwing somebody else under? Like it's just such a bad. <laughs> I'll feel look. better about being banned if this person is also banned. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, that's not a great look. I still feel bad, but mainly because, like, I've been banned before. And so I kind of know the feeling where it just, like, you know you fucked up. There's nothing you can do about it. And, in fact, I didn't even have any publicity on Twitter. I wasn't a streamer. I was years before. And, like, it just feels like you're helpless. And so, like, I kind of understand where Seven's coming from, where it just feels, like, incredibly unfair. Because you just see every other example of people doing arguably worse things and, and you know, just in the history of runescape where they don't get permed and you just feel like oh, you're yeah. being unfairly treated so i understand where he's coming from and it does suck because he obviously put a lot of time into his account but it's like dude what are you doing then like why are you running that shit like why, why are you continually running these things and i don't know the full history i don't know if it was reported or not i don't know if like i don't know the whole thing's just unfortunate because i don't want to see people get banned i don't yeah but you just like yeah. Like, I, I understand that a lot of people do get away with a lot, with a lot of stuff, especially, like, when we think about RWT services, yep. uh, I guess, client slash uh, AHK abuse, especially in PvP. Like, a lot of stuff does, like, people completely get get away with it all the time. 
But to me, that doesn't mean that, like, because those are problems that if a really easy case of bug abuse pops up, that it should be, like, not dealt with appropriately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, for them, like, on their side, it was a really easy case. Like, I'm sure they have a system where they can filter out, like, raids completed with X invocations on, and all they had to do was look at hardcore run and softcore run, because that's not going to pop up in any normal run. Yeah. And they just filter their, their system to where they see raids that were completed with those two invocations on at the same time. And boom, list of bug abusers. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is something that was very easy for them to handle. And that's why, like, they were able to ban 100 people in, like, a matter of a day. Yeah. Like, it didn't take, like, a shit ton of investigation like they had to for, like, the purple reroll thing. And, like, they would have to for, like looking into like services and not just going off screenshots and that can easily be faked and getting people banned and stuff yeah no 100 percent. it was actually pretty crazy how they just literally found all the names uh, yeah so I'm basically basically i guess what i was getting at was like you set yourself up for failure man like it, it was really easy for them to figure out what was going on and who was doing it yep it sucks it's unfortunate pikachu face yep <laughs> Yeah, it's unfortunate, but it, it's also like a nice reminder to everyone else. <clears throat> I think there was a big, as cringe as it sounds to use this term, like publicity stunt to be like, okay, when there's a bug in the game, <clears throat> don't abuse it. Because I feel like the more like shit that would come out like that and where it's not being punished yeah. up front, like people people, just, people just forget they can get banned. Exactly. I think that's the biggest and thing. And for some reason, like, a lot of people also, like, maybe it has something to do with, like, the, the major bugs that we had in the past, the Tebow spawn, the uh, max cash glitch. People didn't get banned for that. Like, it happened to, like, everyone because it was so accessible. Like, people were accidentally reproducing it and stuff. Mm -hmm. People were seeing a Tebow on the ground and picking it up. No one was going to get banned for that. So the game, got the game got rolled back. Nothing happened, basically, for the most part. But something like this, it's not like, oh, you're not accidentally stumbling across this. You were actively going out of your way to reproduce this. Yeah. What What was it anyway? Was there like some weird thing you had to do or, or could you just click them on? Because I'm assuming you could I think just it, click them on. I don't know the details of it, honestly. I think it had something to do with the presets. Okay, yeah. If it had something I think to do it came that, out that's... when they added the presets. Yeah, that's bug abuse. It's not just like, oh, I accidentally had both of these on because I clicked them. Like, no. I'm sure it was found on accident at first, but it seems like the way to set it up would be like, especially for getting every invocation on or like multiple of them, like not just hardcore and softcore. Like if you're doing it, you might as well have hardcore, softcore, try again, persistence. If you get all four of them, it's intentional. Yeah. Iron Scars asks, what are your thoughts on the multiple quality of life updates chambers and CMs have gotten over the years? And where would you have drawn the line had you had that power? So just all the quality of life that we've received. Or is I can't really, line? I can't really think of, uh, off the top of my head of any of them that I think have had a negative impact. Honestly, I think some people were. I, I mean, to be honest, the Vanguard change was super welcome in my books, to, simply because you had to yeah. like lower your DPS just to make sure you don't reset. <laughs> Yeah, especially with the power creep that the game received over like the couple of years yeah. <laughs> after Chambers came out, like TOA, TOB coming out, for example. Yeah. Um, like the power creep made it exceedingly difficult to not reset vanguards every single time you attack them. Yeah, that was a very like it. Sure, it made the room easier, but it made the room a lot more playable, which I think is the primary concern. Yeah, but I uh, I, I really think like Chambers especially is in a really really good place apart from Ice Demon. What do you think about... I know I know, CMs are a thing where you don't need a scout, but what do you think about scouting? Should that still be a thing in the game? Um, Honestly, the only issue with scouting right now is it goes back to how bad Ice Demon is, especially if we're just looking strictly from points per hour. Mm. So uh, thieving is not a problem anymore? I, I, I am, thieving, I uh, thieving, not as good as tightrope, and yeah. not good for someone who's just trying to go for a speed run time, apart from like CM where you're forced to, obviously. But points per hour thieving is fine. I feel like they could really like the time of the the point per hour loss of doing thieving like outweighs the time of scouting around it. Okay. But it is worth scouting around ice demon. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Basically, uh, it, it goes back to how the point system works at chambers. You get five dam you get or typically you get five points per damage you do. 
it's going to change with like some caps. Mm. But typically, you get five points per damage you do. And at Ice Demon, you don't get a boosted point, even though you get reduced damage. So not only is Ice Demon tanky as shit and takes forever to kill, you you don't get a lot of points for the kindling, and you don't get very many points for hitting it because you're hitting like 15s. When are we going to get barbarian woodcutting training? Where we can just chop stuff barbarian with our barbarian woodcutting? Just chop and like when are we going to get barbarian mining? Or just mine stuff with our bare hands. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> we might as well just get a toll belt, right? That's what I've been asking. I'd, I'd believe a toll belt more than more than barbarian. I've been wanting a toll belt barbarian for... mining. You fucking digging? <laughs> I've been <laughs> just go back your, to the dig site, using my man. Your Come finger on, finger and just pounding your finger into the rock, just breaking it. No, um, yeah, they, we really need a tool belt. I've been a huge fan of the tool slot, like the actual inventory slot <clears> of a tool. Or a yeah, tool, I guess tool we're, we're getting off topic and going outside of chambers with this, <laughs> but like, I, I'm not against like quality of life, like tool belt presets. I like that then. Yeah, I think a lot of quality of life. Like, I, enjoy I understand like a lot of things do make the game easier, but mm -hmm. it's more fun. Like, it's a game though. Like we don't, we shouldn't need be so, we chore. shouldn't be so like hyper focused on the prestige of like, the difficulty and this took x many hours yeah, like the I game agree. should it's about making it playable i agree with that wholeheartedly like fun is the concern you know yeah um i would love to see scouting go to be honest i'm glad there's such thing as cms and i'm glad that they're a little bit more like balanced now so like i don't know mm -hmm. I, I saw cms initially it's just like horribly unfun until uh ca's came out and i actually like was forced to grind 150 of them and I was like, okay, these are actually kind of fun. You just have to get into it. If uh, if the points for Ice Demon were rebalanced a bit, then there'd be no reason to scout apart from preference. That would be cool. Which I think would be uh, pretty well balanced. But then the only like sore spot with that is doing regular speed runs. Mm, like as yeah. it is right now, like I guess as a community, we kind of have to decide if we want like regular chamber speed runs to be... Like to always be like you pay some guy who is botting forty account scouting. <laughs> I know and that's RWT the problem the with gold. it. Do we pay this guy five mil for a layout every single time? Or that's the fucking problem. I just feel like it would be so. Do we much add better? some kind of arbitrary pre scout, or maybe something that doesn't have, or that has like reduced rewards or something, or with a fee? Dude, there's I, just so many different ways. Yeah, I would be a huge fan if it was just a gold sink. If you want your perfect layout here. Chuck two mil gold into this little coffer. It gets sunken out of the game. Boom, you get your raid right there, right then and now. Perfect world, everything you want. They could make the prices whatever they want. They could adjust those. I don't really care. Maybe you could just get, if you did enough raid completions, you just get enough points to just buy free scouts or whatever. But like, they, I don't know. That That is really the problem with it. It's not just paying somebody, it's paying a botter. Like these dudes are botting scouts. Yeah, it's it's super well known. Like they're they're botting on like forty accounts in RWTing yeah, and all. Like this is not great. I, I've bought scouts from them, but like it, it, it's super well known. Yeah, I mean, I've pro I probably bought a couple myself, and I was doing chambers three years ago. I'm assuming like I would just, I actually I never really bought them. I would just get them, I guess, because you know streamer privilege and all. But no, uh, no, I think I bought a few actually, probably from botted accounts. Yeah, that's why. Uh, great. That's one reason I like, especially over the past couple of years, have had like no interest in regular chamber speedrunning at all. Yeah, it's just, just awful. Like, you need to... the layout being a factor of it. Yeah, it's not great. CMs are nice because it's just like a dedicated. I just, layout. Uh, just my only concern is I wouldn't want it to be so accessible to get whatever layout you want that the meta is doing a single layout over and over and over again, because that just takes away like what i think is one of the more fun parts of chambers is the variability yeah no that's true yeah it's just tough like i personally i've gotten so used to and so i enjoy static stuff a lot more just keep it static i don't know sometimes the randomization of stuff like yeah it can be kind of fun but like we're so the large a large portion of the player base just loves being super competitive with stuff and when there's just so much randomization it's just like i don't know i don't want it anymore yeah, it really it really stands out, especially for regular chamber speedrunning. Mm -hmm. Anyone who ever wants to go for that record, and especially like people are going for it right now because we just got massive gear upgrades, like it's on the table again, you know? Yeah. Because that, that's what happens to all these records. They hit a point where like someone has gotten a time that's so insane that you have to play perfectly and get like one in a hundred RNG to even <laughs> have a chance at it. 
and like that just demotivates a bunch of people from going for it but then we get a little bit of power creep and that record's back on the table and you got like 10 insane gamers that are like sending like all day sessions going for it like a like like rasa for example reminds me of uh those six hour mining records where like at this point now it's you have to be like tick perfect for mining six hours and you have to get like one in even, 50 yeah, even the even the mining gets the rng <laughs> because of the the procs yeah <laughs> it's I crazy love it it's just like this is so dumb at this point you can't miss a single take you have to hit all your rocks perfectly and then you have to get the one in 50 shot of like getting a f amazing rng and you have to do resets every hour as well this is all i've heard like I, I i haven't done any of these myself but i've heard about it just like jesus this no one is... actually does that right yeah no, of course nobody would actually <laughs> of course not no <laughs> okay um yeah so that question it's i feel like all the quality of life has been really nice yeah ba basically ice demon sucks yep and all they really need to do is just add some points to it right i mean obviously people yeah. would still choose tightrope but like at least make it i mean it, it's still like it's never going to be fun to be sitting there say spot kiting it or walking around the room in a mm -hmm. circle and hitting zeros over and over and over again yep. but at least make it worth the time absolutely okay mope asks favorite end game content and why is it cox and i'll just read his uh, other two thoughts on toa as someone who loves to push the limits like the consistent 575s we've already kind of covered that so great to see the miserable mace bros together finally oh definitely the cast i've looked the most forward to so far lake h log dog on my fucking mm. chest <laughs> i didn't favorite end game first. content and why is it chambers <laughs> uh I don't know. Chambers, uh, it's definitely the thing I've spent the most time on in the game. I've probably done like, God, this is going to make me depressed. Uh, <laughs> I, I've probably done like 4,000 hours of Chambers alone. Eh, it's not bad. <laughs> so it's like, it's definitely the, the thing I've spent the most time on the game. I guess like we were talking on earlier in the guest, uh, a big part of like the fun of the game for me is like self-improvement. Yeah. And Chambers being one of the most like complex pieces of content in the game especially for like truly min maxing it there there was always room for improvement and so like that was an easy way for me to enjoy it for a super long period of time and then i guess the replayability of it like i i personally like the variability with the like self scouting and having different layouts mm. having to think ahead for every single room be like okay i need to i need to save these potions for this room once i get this far i can get rid of this um like and then truly min maxing like thinking ahead like i need to have this much space to pick up this from here yep. go this way after this like i uh I, I actually really like that part of it like uh the part that's not static i guess which kind of goes back to like we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. like i like uh i like having to like think on my feet yeah that I could see some fun in that just not having the absolute static the only thing about the staticness is just the records it's just yeah, it, it's like hard. speed running, exactly. basically. Yeah, but as far as like doing, like it almost feels more like a raid because it's not always the same thing. That's true. Chambers is Chambers really is fun. I mean, it, I had such a blast doing it. I lost <clears> the passion for it. Obviously, when I got my Elder Mall, I was just like, I was done, and I only had to do twelve hundred, not four thousand something. <laughs> so lucky me. But uh, yeah, yeah. It, also, the, also a really big part of it for me though is. Uh, I, I just like soloing stuff, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. So like I, I have no gripes with TOB. I just don't like having to put together a team if I want to do something for like two hours. It's surprising that you never really got into like just soloing TOB as much as like I mean I guess. Maybe it makes sense. maybe that's just the Iron Man part of me. Like I, I don't even want to even get into oh, trying it with no purple sweets and I don't want to play a main account. Yeah, I forget that purple sweets are such a big thing. If they were to get rid of that like fifteen minute thing on P one, I I know people are on on P two Verzik. I don't know. I think yeah, because you could you could probably get through soda seg reliably with like potato sacks. Oh yeah, and even if you needed a few sweets, like it's not that big of a deal. Just do like one master clue or a few, I guess. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. Tob is just like my least favorite of the raids though, so I, I've just never even like considered the thought of like wanting to like pursue soloing it or anything it just never looked fun to me mm -hmm. now tob was my least favorite as well simply because like 90 percent of my tob was scytheless 
In fact, I was like oh, downgrading yeah. weapons, so that wasn't really particularly fun. Just it almost goes back to like that feeling we were talking about a nightmare where you're not even really doing it so much for like doing the content and having fun <laughs> with it as much as you just want the Give reward. The item. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wanted Another to ask tour. I wanted to ask this about TOA. You've completed TOA and I'm pretty sure like three times over at this point, right? Like how many Um times? two fangs, two chaps. Okay. So two times three over. Three plus almost. of everything else. <laughs> but you have five staves for those that didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Like, can you imagine Chambers came out? Month in, you have five fucking Tebos and everything. Oh, else. yeah. Like, it's That'd just like weird. insane. It's crazy, too, because jo the drop rates really aren't, like, much crazier than, uh, like, they're, they're very similar, like, especially at, like, 300 rate level to, mm -hmm. like, Chambers, for example. Mm -hmm. But the amount of completions is just blowing away anything the other two raids saw on release. Yeah. No, that's for sure. And there's also 12 items on Chambers' table. Yeah, if you break it down, like, hourly, like you're getting purples at like a similar rate to the other raids if you go higher invocation you're getting them more often but it's a lot more difficult than the other raids at high invocation yeah and wiping is just probably a lot more <clears throat> gonna happen a lot more yeah yeah and it just happens more it's cool though i i think uh i know we've already talked about it but just i like just a lot of respect on you for just pushing the highest invocations and grinding them out i just think if you can complete something once, you can do it a million times if you just put in the work and stuff. And I just, I personally enjoyed it because I just love to see people pushing the absolute limits and just getting hella rewarded for it. So like, I'm glad you've been just snagging purples left and right too. I think it's cool. Yeah, I've been having, I've been having so much fun with it. And obviously like the, the driving factor there is self-improvement. Yep. But uh, definitely have to give credit to New Type who has been like the big one pushing the boundaries. Yeah. And then um, Kirby, of course, as well, has been doing, like, various restricted stuff. Huge. Which is, like, a different kind of way of pushing the boundaries. Huge shout-out to Mogo Kirby. His videos yeah, have helped me. Rather than, uh, rather than pushing it, like, as, as high as it can go and, like, trying to do it as efficiently as possible, he's trying to see, like, what's the worst you can work with. Yep. It's just, like, a completely different way of looking at it. Okay. The Duck Chris asks, on Iron Man drop completion... Do you think most or all bosses should be reasonably completable for Iron Man, or is it okay to have logs like Nightmare, Corp, and Release Day Cox, where only the top, top irons would even consider trying for completion? Also, what's reasonable in hours? Oh, God. Do you think most or all bosses should be reasonably completable for Iron Man, or is it okay to have logs like Nightmare, Corp, and Release Day Chambers? Uh, I guess it depends, like, one, like, what the piece of content is. Like, Nightmare Drop Rates, even to this point still, are, like, not really good because it's a, like, standalone boss, not like a, not like a raid, and they're not, like, game-changing items. So, like, no one really wants to go for them because they're not really going to do that much for you. Yep. But, like... If a Twisted Bow is twice as rare as it is right now, like, so many people would still go for that shit because it will do that much for you. Yeah. So it really depends. Like, it, it's like time versus reward, I guess, <clears throat> for a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, as far as what's reasonable in hours, I, uh, I feel like that's going to change person to person. Us as content creators, we can regularly play the game for, like, 60 hours a week. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, a non-content creator, they're probably struggling to play 10 hours a week. Yeah. So, like, something that we spend a year of our lives on might take someone six fucking years. Yep. But do we do we balance around people that play super casually like that? And honestly, I, I, I don't even know if I could say playing a video game, like one single video game, 10 hours a week is casual. <laughs> I know. Like by RuneScape standards, standards it is, yeah. but like it's like man, Still like growing fun. up, if it was like, oh, he plays Call of Duty like ten hours every week, it's like man, that guy loves Call of Duty. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, well, here, let me ask you this: what What did you think about Nex drop rates? Just as an example, uh, the one in oh, forty three, by the way, not the one in fifty. Yeah, the one, in, the one in fifty three was a harsh overreaction it purely was. because they. The, sh the straight oversight of mass worlds. Yeah. Like, um, it's like, 
they wanted people to like be facing it in like five man teams and stuff on release, but they didn't think about how that would be possible at all. Yeah. And they just straight up released it and eighty man worlds, the boss is dying in thirty seconds. They have to change mechanics of the boss to where like it adds like this cap that now annoys all the small teams at yep. the damage thresholds. Super you hit a ruby bolt and you hit a one. That is I, that still pisses me they off. They had to add that because masses were skipping entire phases. <laughs> And then um, they had the harsh like changes of the drop rates on release like immediately because of masses like having fifty second kills and bringing in drops left and right. Yep. I just oh, think man. of um. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think about the one in forty three though? Is that fair? Is that like uh, a good balance? Is that too rare? It's it's Probably. daunting, but I do think the next items are that good to like be worth it. Yeah. Like they're they're strict best in slot. There's no argument. Zerat Ambrose is their best in slot. Torv is best in slot. ZCB is on really anything good. with above 500 HP and that's not insanely tanky to range is best in slot DPS. Yep. No, like I... it, it will it will always beat claws and like anything with the HP that lets it hit 110. Basically. Nex really is in a good place. I think I think the one in 43 is really good. For, <clears throat> I mean, obviously selfishly and personally, I would I'd, I'd be even more of a fan if it was like one in 35. But the one in 53, like you said, was a total oversight and a one in 43 is nice and because like you said they're useful fucking items unlike i don't know nightmares just getting to the point yeah where they're, they're just stuff. they're uncontested best in slots yeah. you look at that item you're like i want that because i know it's the best thing that i can have in that slot <laughs> whereas people look at nightmare they look at inquisitor they're like oh it'd be nice for a couple things but would i really use it that much yeah and it's so much longer it feels like to do Fasani's, I think. I don't actually know the hours of Fasani's compared to like Nex. Getting like full Inquisitors versus full Torva. Actually, what uh, is I think that? it's I know? think it's still like twice as much. She the the ancient hill specifically is very rare. Okay, but ju just like but like just the armor sets in general, like just getting full Torva or full Inquisitors. Do you know the uh, hours? Um, uh, is it? Probably I guess it depends what team size you do. I'll probably use duos. Yeah, I guess like I the like most duos. efficient. It's around a thousand duos for full Torva. They're like one in five ninety per, or no, one in four ninety per individual piece. Okay, so, so it's like a thousand duos. duos roughly. And it's like a uh, thousand. If you're doing, I don't even know what duo. Like, I'm excited to go back to duo next. Actually, with it's COA so, stuff. Oh, dude, we're but we're doing. I'm gonna assume they're doing flying. I'm gonna assume they're doing five duos an hour, which is super safe. Like counting, like banking and everything. Like that's that's like getting like ten minute kills, which okay. should be like super safe with the TOA stuff. So, uh, that's like 200 hours for full Torva. It's roughly 200 then, for Inquisitors, right? Kind of? What is it at Fosani? I, I remember regular Nightmare was 1100, but I don't remember what it is at Fosani. I think 1800, roughly. And oh, then, is it? Okay, yeah. What do you get at Fosani? Seven kills an hour? Yeah. Maybe eight? I'd say seven. No, you're not going to get eight. Yeah, eight minute. That would be like seven minute kill average. Yeah, no way. Yeah, Inquisitor's like 260, roughly. Okay. Yeah, but Inquisitors kind of sucks. It's just, yeah, just niche. It's super, super niche. It's getting way more niche too, especially now that like the Fang. I know, really especially a that's places. a controversial one, but uh, I I don't like the direction of like niche as much as I like like having like a strict like good item. Like I I like that we got like Torva being like best in slot melee and not like the fancy Virtus that might be good when you go barrage jelly sometimes. <laughs> And I'm glad that we have like best in slot Missouri and not yeah. like. No, you're right. Sit 20 HP. Hope you don't <laughs> roll the dice wrong. You're totally. But you'll right. you'll get to hit like two max hits higher. That I'm I'm still okay with things kind of being niche though. Like for example, Osmumpton's Fang, great item. I think it's yeah. awesome because there I is like variability in choosing your weapons. But that's weapons especially because offered. accuracy is something that's so unexplored. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's been known, it's been known since before any of us knew what a game tick was that we want strength bonus. Yep. Like even if you're a kid, you knew that. Like you want strength bonus. Yep. 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 No, I, I'm, uh, I'm actually really looking forward to some sort of like three tick, super, super accurate, but low, <clears throat> kind of like low, slightly lower DPS, but super accurate, like little ham joint, but something where it like triples accuracy or even quadruples accuracy just something that's so insanely that's accurate. dangerous man but but it has you want to you want to combine you want to combine the effects of 
faster attack speed, which, uh, like we were talking about earlier, like increases that sample size and gets you closer yes. to average. I want that, but I want and it like the Rain double score. accuracy. You want to combine yeah. those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I want like I want something that's even maybe negative strength. I mean, poten- I think just having okay, zero okay, is fine. Okay, okay, okay. I I didn't catch that part that I, you wanted it to also be like very low hitting yeah very low hitting but something that will hit like this will hit there's no question and (laughs) something something where like you actually want to equip your warrior's ring or you want to equip that accuracy because it's being like quadrupled or something just my first thought is it's like it's like a little ankle biting dog and just chipping (laughs) away it's so reliable though a little chihuahua or something just just chipping away at tecton (laughs) five seven five seven no i mean i really want like i think there is room for that kind of stuff and i think it's just like exciting the fang has brought a little bit of excitement to me i'm not gonna lie i just think it's a really cool oh yeah thing. people people love the fang man yeah. it's uh, a awesome. i know it's like a debate right now about the rarity of it and the accessibility for like mid game slash early early late game iron man but gameplay wise just players in general love using the fang because you get what you expect yep what? like its results don't vary very that much and you get what you expect and people like consistency yeah what, in what, a game where there's so much RNG all around us all the time. Yeah, it literally never misses. Like, there's literally places where it will not miss. Like, it's just, it will just never hit a zero. You hit, like, three zeros in a row, and you, like, you have the right to complain. <laughs> I know, but that... Dude, if you're killing... Okay, for example, if you're using Osmumpton's Fang against, um, any, like, any, any Slayer monster that just has, like, zero defense, like, you literally will never hit a zero. It just, you just won't. It's impossible like it's really nice kind of in a way i guess you wouldn't really ever hit as I, I guess you do hit zeros and other things when you roll a zero as a damage but like you just don't with osmumpton's fang it's, it's also interesting uh like we're like um we're thinking of it mainly in like the sense of like where it'd be like the best option with like maximum dps stuff mm-hmm. but it also adds a lot of options like it's not as punishing with the fang to like go with like full jesse and ellie somewhere and you still have that consistent weapon doing damage, and you're just AF games. It's true. What do you think about the scythe? It's not uh, even used at raids three. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's one of the topics actually. I think I remember oh, oh, seeing someone tweet that. Um, how it's uh, slacking behind the twisted bow and scythe. Okay, or, yeah, uh, I found it. Shadow women. I found it. Who Bell Delphney. Oh, of course. <laughs> Asks, well, says, the big three, Tebow, Scythe, Shadow, each perform amazing in their own raids. However, it seems as if Scythe has definitely fallen behind in comparison to its magic and range counterparts. Do you believe the Scythe deserves a buff to keep up with the other two? Perfect. So, I mean, as far as falling behind, the only thing that stands out to me is, like, its lack of use in TOA. Because... Yeah nothing I, I don't know there's like maybe like what two or three places where you were scything before where you can consider using the shadow now but then like also like not having the defense bonuses is going to be an option like i know you've been uh doing a lot of kree lately which uh you seem to like a lot yeah no shadow or a little bit at least i i i don't know if you saw that video i uploaded of just like it's the same method i was doing earlier except i'm just switching out the range with the shadow and mage gear yeah it's so consistent like i i didn't even have to eat hardly like i did eat just to play itself safe but i didn't actually have to it's yeah i uh i think the reason that the scythe isn't so good at toa doesn't really have much to do with like jagex intentionally like wanting to undervalue the scythe or devalue the scythe as much as it is like at toa it's very apparent especially with the way the scaling went they went the route of making shit very tanky which seems to be at least i think so because they wanted to make the fang good yeah which like it it didn't really need help but (laughs) they wanted to make the fang good in the raid is what it seems and they went the route of making everything very very tanky and that's not where the scythe shines yep somebody was I think I'd mentioned in my video earlier just talking about how the scythe literally has stab accuracy, but there's no way to use stab. Yeah. Which is strange. Um, Everyone's been wanting to stab the Vasa Crystals with the scythe for like four years now. Yeah. I, I think, okay, here's one thing. I actually think this could play a part in both bu- buffing the scythe and Inquisitors, is just adding maybe a little bit more crush bonus to the scythe just normally. 
and I don't know, just so it like kind of allows Scythe to be. It <clears> gives Inquisitors that ability to just do make crazy it a better DPS crush damage. weapon. Yeah, just making the Scythe. I don't know. So it would increase the value of Inquisitors because now you can use Crush with a Scythe at other places alongside Inquisitors, obviously, and then you just. I don't know. Then you've also buffed the scythe in general. I don't know. In a way, I I just think that would be kind of a cool. I first thought I kind of like it. Yeah, there's probably some downsides, but the thing yeah, is, there's scythe, more there if we thought more about it. I just love the scythe because it's so expensive to use. Like that's a cool weapon to have because it's really good, but it's re it's costly. Fang's completely free. I mean, one thing that could be done, although it would kill one-handed weapons like rapier and whatnot, basically, would be a. Uh... Just getting rid of the scythe's like a uh, opponent size mechanic. So it always hits threes? It, or three yeah, slots? triple splat everything. Jesus. But that would uh that would kill like the uh, the one handed weapons a good bit for a lot of things. Because <laughs> right now, like they 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 uh they beat the fang on low defense, but they wouldn't beat a scythe on low defense. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I just I like the scythe. I want it to stay good because it is just such an expensive weapon to use and it's awesome looking. And Yeah. It still is good. And the thing is, like, the scythe, they did make it in a way where they can easily make more stuff where it's good at. And it's still good in so many places. It's but, true. like, naturally with power creep, like, new items are going to end up being better than old items at some places. Yeah. And at the rate that we get, like, PVM content, like... We just got like all these new items that become like best in slot at all these different places. We didn't get a bunch of new different places to use them though. So like that pool of places is not any bigger for a whole nother item in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Verb asks, or he says, oh, this is going to be good. Favorite piece of content in the game. And if you were to give advice on consistent ways to increase difficulty in content, what would it be? It's ver verbatim asking. What is your favorite uh, piece of content? Favorite oh, piece of content, I guess. Chambers. Yeah, I guess it's going to go back to Chambers, but I've been really enjoying COA a lot. I, I just, It hasn't been out enough for, for me to call it my favorite, but like I completed it twice over and I, I don't want to leave it right now. <laughs> That's cool. It's just fun. Um advice on consistent ways to increase difficulty i i think emphasis on movement is always very good yeah i'm a huge fan of movement yeah like gauntlet type stuff the, we saw some of that in toa i love sepulcher and i want them to cut i've i literally went into the content creator discord like six months ago or something when i was just obsessed with sepulcher still am by the way i love that place but I was like, dude, we need to come. We need to come out with an insane. Like, we need to come out with basically like raids difficulty of a sepulcher. Like, yeah, just I want that. I, I just want something that's super fun, super difficult, and it's all movement based. There's not, there's not even attacking or anything. I another just, thing that uh, another thing that massively increases difficult, like especially like high invocation TOA is like supply conservation. Like trying to do stuff at like max DPS without using any supplies, any prayer points. Like stuff like that increases the difficulty, but it's kind of like artificially increasing it because you're kind of doing that yourself. Yeah. And that's something if content was balanced to be that way, like oh, players would have an uproar. Mm -hmm. Nobody wa nobody wants you to have to be that sweaty. It's nice to be like rewarded for being that sweaty, I guess you want to call it. But nobody would want to have to do that. True. Okay. Katie asks what is one of your biggest achievements to date on your iron man lake what can we expect to see you or see from you content wise in the next few months also after three years are you finally going to teach me inferno love your biggest fangirl <laughs> uh biggest achievement on the iron man oh god uh i was pretty happy with uh how quickly i got the zuck helmet when combat achievements came out Oh yeah, you got but, uh, that super early, right? I know you. Would... Yeah, I think it was like the first week. Jesus, yeah, you. Jenny didn't didn't beat in. Jenny, but I was, I was pretty close behind Jenny. I think I might have been like third, maybe. Yeah, that's insane. But uh, that shit was daunting. There was I so guess many like fucking you'll probably relate to this a lot, but yeah. like it's hard to pick like one thing because when I when I look at the account, I think of like the entire account and its whole journey, and I'm sure like with how like stacked your account is that you 
felt the same way about it. Yeah. I, I it's would... like a, it's like a culmination of a bunch of different things. It's true. It really is. I think it always kind of comes back down to the mace. And I just simply think... Oh, God. I, I think that's the biggest achievement simply because it was so stupid of a grind. Like, so unfun. I'm, just... I'm proud of myself for sticking to it, but I'm also, like, I'm very disappointed <laughs> in myself that I let myself do that. Do something I did not enjoy. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm i very, like, disappointed in my own stubbornness about yeah. it. I wish I quit that grind. Yep, yep. Like, we, honestly. We both would have been way I, better I, off. I made my life, I actively made my own life worse for a year, <laughs> continuing that grind, and consciously chose to do that daily. Even though I knew I wasn't enjoying it. We were breathing and in heavy I hated copium, every second man. of it. I actively chose to do it. Heavy copium. For like a full year. And like, <laughs> I'm not going to call that my biggest achievement because that I think that's more of like signs of an addiction. Yeah, no, no, that's definitely true. I still find it an achievement simply because like, like, yeah, I'm proud of myself for sticking to it yeah. the same way you are, but... It, it, I, I think as I, well I, just I, I seeing wish I the quit. drop, it, there's something about, like, the magic of actually finally seeing the drop. Like, could you believe your eyes when you saw it? Like, the mace was just oh, sitting I was, on the ground. Like, yeah, you got it I in wasn't a even team, streaming. Right? Didn't you get I it? wasn't even streaming. I was doing solitary bingo. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> oh Katie's sitting next to me in my office. I'm just hanging out doing, like, five-man or... Yeah, doing five-man nightmare with my yeah. bingo team. <laughs> Like, hadn't even started the stream yet. I was just going to chill for, like, an hour, have my coffee. Oh, God. Katie's sitting right next to me, hanging out, playing with the dogs. And then uh, <laughs> I just get the maze, and I just look at her. I'm like, I just got the maze. <laughs> Dude, when I saw the maze on the ground day one for Sonny's, I literally could not believe my eyes. It for just... you, it was truly a storybook, man. Like, the new content comes out. It your was. stream is booming. You were rank one. You've been going for, like, 18 hours. <laughs> it was perfect. It was the cherry on top, man. <laughs> It was. Like that was peak. Yeah, no, it was. I, I think that's really what it came down to. I don't really get that feeling anymore. Did you get that feeling when you got your shadow or got any like recent drops? Oh yeah, but I was also really sleep deprived. It was like six a.m. Man. Mm. I, I I was like it was like six a.m. I think I streamed like sixteen hours that day or something. I was super sleep deprived when I got the shadow. <laughs> Okay, what about the Tebow? How was that reaction? I don't think I ever actually asked you. Just your feeling. Oh God. Seeing um, it. I think that was the first time I truly lost my shit on the game. <laughs> that was definitely my first like big like streaming moment. Yeah. Like that was the first big thing I ever got on stream and it took like a year of streaming to get it. But that was like my first like super hype streaming moment. Like it happens all of a sudden like I go from like I don't remember how many viewers I had at the time, maybe like 3 or 400 and then all of a sudden I have like 2000 viewers all at once like everyone is there immediately. Holy it's shit. it's surreal. I love that about the community by the way. When somebody everyone gets just something pours in. everybody yeah. tells everybody from every other stream, "Go, go, go." Yeah. Yeah, it, it was just like super surreal. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Um what can we expect to see from you content-wise? Going to go back to chores anytime soon? Oh, the chores? <laughs> uh, all kinds of different chores, man. Uh, right now, like I, like I was talking about earlier, I'm still not ready to say bye to TOA. Like I, I still have some improvements I want to make at it, so I'm done with it. It's still doing well on the stream. Um, I do want to actually use the TOA items in other places, though. I think you've done a pretty decent bit of that so far, That's but fun. I've done zero of that, basically. <laughs> Uh, one thing which I know isn't probably going to do too well on the stream because of how subtle all the mechanics are, but I do like Duo Next a lot. Dude, Next And is... uh, it got changed a lot with the new items out, so I w I'm going to try that out a good bit. I'm also missing the Ancient Hilt, which is like one of the only things I still need as far as PVM goes. That's a great item to be missing, by the way, especially if you do enjoy Next, because then you yeah. just have an excuse to just, you don't even have to. The only thing is, like, it. Next isn't going to do well on the stream because it's it's just too subtle, man. As someone just casually watching, it, you don't understand what's going on. You just yeah. see hit boss, hit boss, hit boss. It's fun. It's a, I honestly think you'd be surprised with how much more fun it is with the Fang. And especially because now you're not just doing range only. Because didn't you just do range only? And Light Bear. Yeah, the majority of mine were like uh, range camping. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I've been. You know, I got the Torva Blade. I got it down to where I was using, I would say, like six or six to eight doses of brew average per kill. Jesus. That's crazy. Like stacking manta rays and eating on the like cooldown between phases, and whenever you get in the ice prison, you can eat without losing ticks. I know for sure light bearer is probably worth it. I actually don't know for sure, but I'm assuming it's worth it. But dude, it really, oh, yeah, for sure. it really sucks how much you miss with that ZCB. Like holy shit, 
it pisses me off to no end when you literally use 75 spec you're losing your b ring max hits and you're just like missing you're like why am i using this god for sake it really ring? it really makes me wonder if like <laughs> i don't know i've never kept like a sample size going but you should hit like i think it's like 65 percent of your zcb specs because it, it gives 100 percent accuracy like bonus accuracy so double yeah it's just... and the standard accuracy like at least in arma i mean it's probably higher now in missouri but it was like 35 actually i will say it would even be it would feel even better actually in a duo because you're just in the fight for longer so yeah like more. you you should hit like 70 percent of them but it it sometimes feels like you just miss every single one dude like, it feels like that every have kills where you hit like time. one out of six you know what i mean yeah i think the biggest thing is just knowing i'm losing a b ring because of it and then when you miss it's like well all those extra max hits are just fucking gone like that's uh, yeah it's because of how good it is and whenever it does nothing it's like you know what you missed out on yeah yeah that's true that has to be it light bear is definitely still worth it it just doesn't feel like it sometimes but yeah i think you'll really enjoy it duo next and i think you'll actually see wait what the fuck this guy just got two K. oh no no he this guy in my clan just got a cape of skulls and then it appeared like 20 seconds no later. way but it was uh, the new collection log notification. Um, okay, what was the last question? Uh, oh, yeah, when are you going to teach Katie the Inferno? Oh, God. <laughs> she, uh, she doesn't actually want to learn the Inferno right now. She was doing it like a few months back. She would do like a couple hours of it every day, and she was getting like further and further. Okay. But uh, she doesn't like stressing herself out that much, you know? That's fair. I didn't want to. That's why, like, she she's really enjoyed TOA. She obviously hasn't done it, like, as much as I have, but she's really liked that, like, she can increase the difficulty on her own rate. Yeah, that's right. And, like, try to go for, like, a new PB, like, making the rate as hard as she can and stuff. Yeah. Add what you're comfortable with. She doesn't really want to learn in front of her right now, though. That's fair. She just wants to put me on the spot. I didn't really want to go for the fang kit, but sometimes, it, sometimes it's a good thing to be a streamer, just because, like... You do you have get people pressured. asking you about it, and you're just like, oh, fuck, I'm going to do this. Fine. Say, babe, why, why does your fang look like that? I know. And, like, of course, I wanted well, Gordy's it's... looks like this. <laughs> I'm glad I got it. And I, I'm just glad I've had experiences. I think combat achievements were honestly the biggest, uh, I don't know, experience of mine of just like, okay, I can do these tough challenges. I just got to put in a little bit of time, and then it's super rewarding at the end. So just fucking do it. Just like sometimes I don't want to, but mm -hmm. okay. Zout asks if you could have any location in game exist IRL, which location would it be? Wilderness. No. Um. Super oh excited. Purge. <laughs> super excited about this cast. Been waiting the Lake Bay cast since number seventy three when Bodhi said he considered Lake the most underrated streamer on the platform. Hype. Any location in game. Oh god. Like the Enchanted Valley, that's like super pretty. BKQ. Oh yeah. That place is boring though. There's nothing to fucking do except get your rune axe and dip forever. I mean anything else is gonna get you murdered. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Actually you can get murdered there. If you try to fish in the Enchanted Valley, that fucking monster pops out and tries to kill you. That's okay. I, I ain't gonna be fishing. I'm trying to think what I would choose. I don't know, like, right now, I'm AFKing Firewatch Sentinels, and I do not want to be here in real life. <laughs> I actually want Dorgishin. Dor Dorgishon, Dorgishon? Or whatever it's called, yeah. That'd be dank. Yeah, that place is cool. Everyone's chill. It's like a nice little market with some, like, crazy exotic foods. It's all, like, raw frogs or something, but, like, still. Imagine being in, like, Pero Pero in real life. Dude, we got to burn that wheat, man. I'm sorry. I have brought up this suggestion so many times. Can we please get an elite Draenor slash Lumbridge Diary where you get an... Why isn't it just a one-take animation? Do that or just get rid of the wheat. Just let us run freely. Like, just the wheat is so 2004, man. Like, get rid of that. Nobody cares about it anymore. I don't know. That's my... I feel like I'd rather just, like, go through it in, like, one take. It's just annoying when you click on an impling and it flies over the thing, and then your dude starts backpathing like seven fucking tiles, and you're just like, I just don't ah. want to give the bots too much, man. No, no, but we should keep it. Okay, we should still keep that one area, and you know, you could speed up the wheat or whatever to one tick if you have like a high enough agility. But they should also just 
get us a new place where no bots are there because you have to do the elite diary and just run around freely catch it catch it or just like change the medium clue meta i think that's the biggest thing the medium clue meta has been pure pure for so long for irons it just needs to be changed same thing with all clue metas to be honest it's just been years and years of the same metas and it's like switch them up please mm. yeah i uh i actually have done all my toa with an elite in my bank so i don't know <laughs> like how the elite rates are. it hurts it hurts me man it hurts my soul are they good don't tell me that nah the elite rate's not great i i think in 300s it's probably like a here let me actually look at my log real quick uh, always thought it was kind of disappointing that we can't get straight master clues from raids yeah nah that's fair there's nothing in the game that straight like gives you a master clue i think what would be cool is inferno would give you a master clue because like, yeah. th then you'd actually have, I mean, because you get nothing from the Inferno for doing it. You just waste. But at that point, are you saying guaranteed? Yeah. yeah I mean, I guess yeah. like I if someone guaranteed. could do it, like off, send off task runs in like an hour, like they deserve a master clue yeah, every hour. I, I would say as well. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. I mean, you would. And it's not even free either. They're probably using like a mill on supplies. At least. <laughs> exactly. And you have the chance of losing it all if you die to Zook. As opposed to someone like spending like ten mil on DMs and just getting it in like ten seconds. Yep. Okay, so I've, it comes out too. I've gotten 10 elites and 178 tombs, and I think that's all the tombs. That's 25 normals and 153 experts. So. Dang, that's crazy. That's half as many uh, or twice as many as I have shadows. <laughs> so elites are like twice as rare as a shadow. Yeah. <laughs> but, twice yeah. as common, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that's not that bad. Yeah. No, it's not bad. I just... <sighs> oh my god, dude, the seeds so nice i have a so i have a thousand nice. and i have a thousand snapdragon seeds what is the craziest normal and i chest have like seven had? super resource the craziest normal chest yeah from a 575 like because uh, it keeps getting up a little bit over three mil like dragon dart tips that and like double snapdragons or something like that oh. it's like, it like 3.6 mil or something wait what would how many how many dragon dart tips can you get if it was all rolls that on a 575 you um, know? like how much it would be like 1500 <sighs> A you triple were, dragon dart tip bro, would be like 1500 uh, yeah that's better than any purple i'm sorry that's just like sexy that would be amazing it'd be worth more than a couple of purples <laughs> dude imagine this you know okay this just came into my head randomly what if raids four or some other like treasure room you know where you're going to get your purple or whatever it's a room full of dragon imps just just flying around, lucky imps, dragon imps. You just go in there and you just have like 30 seconds, just catch as many as you fucking can. You just have a bunch of bottles. Like, I don't know. I feel like that would honestly be like way more dopamine than just opening one. Just, just having like a bunch of dragon imps that just shit out dragon dart tips. Like, oh, oh my God. Is that going to be like a like an overhaul to the party room? Dude, dude, like I'm not going to lie. If you could get, oh, okay. I'm, I'm just thinking of this right now. You know how you get, like, those cache of runes? There's always, like, unique things you get from each raid. Like, just some random stuff. Like, Chambers has... Ooh, I never stuff. thought about that. Getting Implings as a reward from something? Not only getting an Impling from something, but getting a little teleport device that teleports you in to a little secluded area, a little instance, and you just catch as many Implings as you possibly can within, like, 30 seconds. It's just, like, a little bit of fun. Go catch a bunch of them, and that's, like, a rare reward from a raid. Or just something like that. I feel like that would be so fun. Like it's like a like a random event almost. Yeah, it's like dopamine. But it's city. like a reward. <laughs> I don't know. Just have a few luckies as well flying around. Like that'd be fun as hell. Sheesh. Yeah. Yeah, I could see it. It'd be kind of crazy though. I mean, I'd be down for the dragon arrows. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I Dude, could use some dragon arrows. What are your thoughts on a bone dragon or a dragon dragon? That, enter uh, the bone whip. And yeah. <laughs> except this is enter the bone dragon. So it's kind of like an end. <laughs> kind of like an ant where you kill the ant and then you chop it for logs but this would be you kill the dragon and you chisel it down for a dragon ammo. and it gives you like various dragon ammunition yep. tip yep pretty much just tips that'd be pretty cool i um i like many other in-game pvming iron men have been sitting on dragon bones since the day i maxed hoping that one day i can turn them into <laughs> arrows yeah <laughs> I, I know so many like different like in game irons that just like refuse to use their like <laughs> post ninety nine prayer because it might like a, it's such an out there idea but it might be like yeah. dragon arrows one day yeah 
No, I have like 60,000 dragon bones in my bank just camped there. That's actually good. I never actually considered that. I'm just too lazy to use them. There's just too many other things I want to do. Sometimes a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Second base asks, do you think the game is in need of a stronger melee prayer, even if it were just accuracy? Hmm. I guess a I guess a prayer with not as much emphasis on damage and more emphasis on accuracy would be kind of similar to the Fang, right? Yep. I want judgment. I want judgment prayer. Is that the one that was going to be an overhead as well? Yeah, but I didn't want it to be an overhead. I just wanted to be wanted it to be like a piety. Or something. That way, it wouldn't stack with piety. Exactly. You just have judgment. It's double accuracy, no damage whatsoever. Yeah, I think because uh, that was an idea from like when Chambers was proposed, right? I, th I think it so. Was the TOB game was a lot actually. different back then, and oh, I, think it was I, I thought it was proposed. TOB. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah, the game was a lot different back then, and the idea was people are like, okay, you need your protection prayers to stay alive. Like, the, there was no concept of like kiting outside of Zilliana. Mm -hmm. So, like, with the way that people can avoid like not just damage, but straight up being attacked now. <laughs> Like, a, a prayer like that, like, being able to stagger it with piety would be insane. But Because yeah. the, the concept was, like, okay, you're going to trade off your overhead prayers for this. Like, it'd be crazy. You wouldn't even want to use it most of the time. You but, like, now, like, <laughs> look at all the stuff you've seen one prayer accounts do. Exactly. Yeah, I've, I've uh, always wanted judgment. I was also thinking, like, you know what would also buff Inquisitors? Like just give and the reason i come back to this is just because nightmare has kind of been a hot topic of like it's I, of I wouldn't have came on the podcast if i didn't expect sebe agenda <laughs> i'm glad i'm glad you uh i didn't have to tell you that you just already know um oh yeah <laughs> dude what if inquisitors guaranteed a dragon warhammer hit but if oh it, yeah I, I would not be against that if the it, only the only monster in the game that that would be too strong on or considered somewhat OP on is Tecton, and that's not a fucking problem. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking, like, dude, if you have a full Inquisitor set, and you guarantee hit, but, but okay, no, how about this? It's not a guarantee hit, it's a guarantee that the effect will occur. So you could still hit a zero, but you know for a fact if you weren't wearing full Inquisitors, it's still reduced at 30. But you're still getting, like, that zero roll. I guess like you could still miss, but it would guarantee do the effects. So e even a zero damage roll would still. Yeah, yeah, a zero damage roll, but even a miss would still count as it still lowered it by thirty percent. It just guarantee works, but it still misses. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Would it be like a like an all or nothing with the full set? Yeah, you or have would to you get like a partial effect? Eh, that actually be kind of cool too. Yeah, like thirty three percent chance, like additional. No, I think the full set. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be as that. easy as to, as to just do like linear, like 33, 66, 100, because then yeah, that 100 be would just be doubling it, not like guaranteed. Yeah. I Yeah, I think um, the guaranteed full Inquisitors, I think that would be a fucking awesome effect. Even BGSing. On, well, no, I take that back because BGS is actually a slash based spec, right? I think yeah. just, just for the hammer, it would be like amazing. Dude, that would I could I don't know like it, it it doesn't make sense like lore wise why it uh, why it uh has this association with the dragon warhammer but gameplay wise it would be super Actually, comfortable it could you know those motherfuckers with the uh Darth Maul warhammers Darth Maul dragon warhammers sitting around sleep or oh yeah dude there is some lore attached oh my god maybe we're gonna get to fight like vampire lizard men shamans <laughs> Dude, I just want an extension. I want that two-handed uh, Dragon Warhammer that they use. It'll be like 1 in 10k for the <laughs> second Dragon Warhammer. Just, just an Warhammer extra two. handle. It's just an extra handle. But yeah, if you had a Darth Maul version where there's literally a hammer on each side, like the... What the... Like, that would be... You have to kill the vampire shamans for a 1 in 10k, and it's just like a little Zammy sticker. You just <laughs> stick the sticker on your Warhammer, sticker. and it works with the Inquisitor. Just a sticker scratching. Yeah, it'll just be called... Zamorak sticker. <laughs> dude, I'm actually down if Inquisitor set guaranteed Dragon Warhammer spec. Oh, dude, imagine Corp. I know you don't need to imagine that because you're done. Wait, no, you don't you're missing the pet though. I don't have the jar, man. Or oh, the what jar. about the jar? Wait, what about the pet? Do you have a pet? Oh uh, no, I don't have the pet. Dude. I I hope I'm never bored enough on RuneScape to go for the corp pet. 
dude, I'm not going to lie. That is all Inquisitor. That's all Nightmare needs now. Guarantee a Dragon Warhammer spec if you have the full Inquisitor set. Boom. Yeah. Problem solved. That place is again. It, again, consistency is fun gameplay. The thing has proven that. Yep. I think people would enjoy using that. I don't think it would be too broken, really, either. It would get rid of some tedious parts of the game because something people don't like is inconsistencies. Yeah, dude. And uh, a lot of that is like resetting Dragon Warhammer specs over and over again. Yeah, I see you at Chambers. I see Ross Man doing CMs. Like, dude, the amount of times you have to reset. And you guys have even, I mean, I know Ross has like gotten it down to a science. He just goes instantly back in, basically. Like, you as mm -hmm. an Iron You, man, you get muscle that. memory for it, yeah. man. Because you spend so many hours doing it. Dude, if it was guaranteed two hits, oh. I need that. You guys need that. Yeah. I mean, we, we haven't put like a lot of thought into it, or at least I haven't, but I, I can't really think of where it'd be like too good. Like, it, it, it sounds super fun to use. Yeah, and it wouldn't even be, be broken in like PvP. I was just thinking like, oh, maybe there's something in PvP. Who the hell is bringing full Inquisitors and a Dragon Warhammer into PvP? So like, it doesn't even matter. Even if you got reduced 30 defense, just brew back up or something. Um also, like they've done it with so many other things, they can just make it not have that spec in P or not have that set effect in PvP. That's true. Just make the wilderness even more confusing. Just so many, so many things just are. I don't know. Like yeah, it's like a different game. <laughs> it's so different. You just don't know what's gonna. Work. The fact that they randomly, without even basically revealing it to the public, that oh yeah, if you get a, if you um, what was it like if you if there's somebody. What was the thing like the teleport delay like you you couldn't teleport or something like that for a while i think they reverted it or something but if you were in like the yeah i think cave, it was you... something specifically in the rev caves what was that uh i think they added like a i don't remember how long it was i think it was a three tick delay from whenever you click a teleport item to actually teleporting it's so dumb and they don't even like address it they just add it like dude you're gonna get you're gonna get so many they also players. uh they also like accidentally at one point made the rev caves into like old singles mechanics where uh, like where spec trading and stuff oh was a uh, was a thing like old like frontline singles teams yeah. like that era Jesus where Christ. like if you if you not even like it wasn't even multi that was a death trap like if you if you were in singles and you, they fell in on you you would have 20 people <laughs> spamming your address and a bunch of at <laughs> signs and various oh colors God. and your phone would be going off. You'd have a bouncy house outside your door. <laughs> You'd have 40 people like going back and forth between dragon claws and dark bows on you, and you can't see anything. And people just call this a medieval children's point and click game. No, yeah. It's not. It's like a couple game. of months ago, that was happening in the rev caves, and now they got volatiles in both of us also. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Um, Frey asks, which content did you struggle the most in mastering? You make it all look pretty easy, but I'm sure there have, there must have been something that took longer to perf perfect or still struggle with. Uh, I guess it depends, like, really what we consider, like, mastering. I mean, in, in my mind, I don't have, like, a ton of things in the game that I feel like I've truly mastered, especially, like, some things that have changed since I've done them last. Like, I've... At one point, I would say I had Chambers mastered, but right now, like, I'm, I'm going to have to go learn a bunch of new stuff when I go back to it, you know, mm -hmm. with uh, new things that have come out. Uh, as far as struggle, uh, earlier in the cast, we talked about how, like, uh, like getting over the nerves for, like, my first Infernal Cape, like, with Zuck was, like, super difficult, even though I didn't really struggle in the waves at all, even on release. Yeah. Like, the, the nerves and the anxiety of, like, the big boss fight was really getting to me. Um. Uh, I'll say that High Invocation TOA has definitely been the most I've ever died on this video game. Yeah. Just straight planking daily. Yep. I I, I think even as an Iron Man, I think I've spent like a, almost 100 mil on Death Coffer. I've spent over 50 Wouldn't that be like 400 deaths or something? Yep, that would be. And I also, I also spent time learning rooms individually. Like I would turn off Death Invocations. I would put Akka at like 550 and just go practice Akka. Yeah. With, like, no death invocations on and just die there and reset and die there and reset. I would do that, like, without paying the death coffer for it. Yeah, just to get those extra lines. But, like, even with doing that, I still died, like, left and right and left and right, and I still do. Yesterday, I was doing, like, 500s, and I even thought, I even died on 500s a couple of times. I'm, 
I'm glad you're so willing to just admit that and just like say I mean obviously it's being streamed as well so it's like there's no point of like denying that but uh it, oh yeah I've never died yeah no it's <laughs> nice because like people that don't watch your stream they literally just assume like you started doing 575 I, this is what I imagine who knows but I would just watch you start doing 575s like non-stop and I'm like wow but you don't really if you're not watching the stream the whole time you don't even really see oh, yeah. die because you're just back in every every day like every day someone comes in at the end of the raid at the end of a raid or like maybe they watch like one whole raid and it happened to be a really good one and they're like wow you do these so casually and I'm like uh yeah. I'm over here dying man it's good to hear that because like some people just think like, it, it's nice praise but it's like man it, it's hard <laughs> the thing I like about it though like it's exceedingly difficult, but the majority of the time, like, sure, there's moments where I do feel like I get, like, Jagex or whatever you want to call it. But the majority of the time, whenever I die to something, I can straight up be like, okay, this is what I should have done. Mm -hmm. Like, usually, usually most things that kill me, I don't feel like it was hopeless RNG. Keep in mind, I'm Red Xing Baba. Yeah. But I don't feel like it was, like, hopeless RNG. The majority of times when I die to something, it's like, okay, I could have done that better. Yep. No, I, I actually, when I was grinding my five my puny little 500, the ones that you're just speed running, um, when I did my 500, like, it was just every death, it didn't even really affect me that much. I was like, okay, I'll just, like, go back in. Oh, yeah, you get numb to it. Yeah, but it was actually, like, really, it was surprisingly, like, refreshing. Like, you die and you like, okay, I made a mistake there. I Yeah, like you said, there was no, like, RNG element. It was just, I'm bad. Probably like, that relief because you've been focusing for like 30 minutes straight. And now you get <laughs> yeah. a second to breathe. And you're like, okay. like, okay. What did I do wrong? Yeah. Aka was the one that was fucking me up the most simply because I just, I, I never, I still to this day have not made the uh, shadow shift clickable and stuff. Cause I, I'm just not used to like holding shift. to. Yeah. That muscle or... memory. It was strange for me too. Yeah. So like, I, I had to like actually like take my hands off the F keys and just not really use F keys in Aka. Yeah. Like I have to keep my hand on shift or I forget about it. <laughs> yeah. I also am not a fan of control walking. I know that could be useful in some places, but I'm just like, nope, not doing that. It's uh, it's kind of interesting how the entire Aka fight changes so drastically from having a shadow, oh just because of God. like the ability and viability of Butterfly. Dude, it it changes the entire flow of the fight, and it makes it's such a good flow of the fight. It's so much more getting fun. the specials every minute was like such a good fix because you don't just get to skip everything. Like you still do like the core mechanic yeah. of the of the room, yep. which is the memory puzzle. Dude honestly if uh i if it has if, such a good flow to it and it, it doesn't have that same flow without butterflying like it, it's one of those accidental like solo ohm type things you're so right dude it but, feels but so it's cool. locked behind the shadow yep aka now dude is my favorite room like i go in there i'm like this is exciting like this is just fun this is just gonna be a, a blast especially when you're doing a 300 where like you can't even die because you literally have bruise in your inventory Every Every raid, especially, like, every iron goes into it. They really don't want the Mega Rare to be the, their last one. But TOA specifically, I feel especially bad for irons, yeah. that, the majority of Iron Men that will have it be their last one. Yep, yep. So, so many people look at the game, list of chores, they're not going to want to keep doing it after they get their last item. And I would say it's more game-changing in TOA than Scythe and Tebow are in their respective raids. 100%. Specifically since that 4X buff, it, it would be the exact opposite beforehand. Yeah. Uh, beforehand, dude, it was like, all right, my Aka is going to be a little bit faster. Dude, like, I, I think somebody told me Tebow's still better at Zebak, but dude, I'm pulling, like, I literally had a 139. It, it's surprisingly Zebac. close. It's surprisingly close to, like, Amethyst in max range. Okay, is that what it is? Because Dragon Arrows still blow it out the water, bruh. especially with defense reduction. But, like, it, Max Mage is the same as, like, Max Range Amethyst with no defense reduction. Okay, that must be it then. Because, like, it, I literally got a sub-140 Zebak in a 300 yep. raid. Like, part of it is how the defense reduction works with the modifier or the multiplier mm. in TOA. So, like, if you have, like, the 150% multiplier and you BGS a 20, that 20 is also getting multiplied. Okay. So it's, it's as if it was a 30. But you only had to hit the 20, which is a lot more likely. So basically what that boils down to is on these super high defensive mobs, you're getting like a really big defense drain, like pretty realistically without relying on actually hitting a 70. Mm. Yeah. Whereas at like, at like TOB, for example, some of these things have pretty high defense, but to get it down to zero, you're like hoping you hit like a 70. Yeah, that's true. 
yeah i i bring my zcb and i i have an adrenaline because i choose zebak as last i so i get three zcbs like basically guarantee at 110 and then on top of that just the shadow is just fucking melting in i'm like this is like i skip phases because you're just dominating it so oh, yeah it's kind of so it's kind of funny how many people have been sleeping on the zcb and like just now realizing how good it is oh with TOA it's being so out. good at toa because everything everyone was like health. i think it's because people people never really realized that it was always meant to be a spec weapon like sure you main hand it at nex that's because nex has insane defense mm-hmm. and a lot of hp and nex has mechanics that favor being able to move more mm-hmm no, the being ZCB able to range is, is hardcore slug. Next, like it just plays well to camp it at next. Yeah, but as far as anywhere else in the game, it's not a main hand. It's it's a spec weapon day and night. Hundred percent. And, and it um, totally it's one of the best the ones too. Like it, it, I think it's like twenty three DPS on next, for example, where claws would be like ten. Really? Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm just like, like pulling numbers that I think I remember, but yeah, yeah. The spec, not the, the not the autos. God, no, not the autos. Claws. Have you ever seen <laughs> but the, the spec? Animation? Like, it, basically, my point is like anywhere with like the 500 plus HP, where it's gonna get the max hit, and where it has still decent accuracy. Like, if it's not gonna have like 20 percent accuracy, like I think on, I think on like 300 P3 Warden, it's like 95 percent accuracy or something like that. Sheesh. Yeah. Like anywhere where you are more than likely gonna hit the 110 with it, it is automatically like the best DPS spec weapon in the game. That thing's busted. Because if it has an almost guaranteed chance to hit a 110, it's like it's like 35 DPS. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. And at a, a lot of places, it ends up being that way. But it's crazy how many people were like sleeping on it before. And because it was really only seen like, oh, yeah, you want the CCB if you're doing next. It's because you always just think of claws. Like everyone's yeah. mind just drifts to claws. Like, ooh, And claws, claws are easier to use. You put them on, you spec. Yep. CCB, you have to, it takes more spec, you have to, ammo you switch. lose your HP. Yeah, the ammo switch, God, it's so don't annoying. even get me started. I hate, so just let us wear bolts and arrows at the same time. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, not because of, not because of the annoyance of actually clicking the bolts, but because of the annoyance when you don't click the bolts, and we all know there's some fucky stuff going on in the inventory recently. <laughs> <laughs> but the annoyance when you click the bolts and they don't go on, and you click attack with a ZCV, and a t- and and arrows on or vice versa yeah. tebo and bolts versa. on you get a five tick delay as if you attacked it's so without dumb. actually attacking so. and <laughs> and when you're trying to shoot a jug trust me this has happened at zebek multiple times where i'll do my zcb spec i'm trying to hit a jug so i push a jug and i have my fucking bolts on with my tebo and i'm like trying to shoot the jug I'm like shoot it shoot it and you shoot still it. get the five tick delay <laughs> <It's> yep <laughs> Yeah, and then on yeah, and then on top of me just getting absolutely dominated by the roar, just panic brewing and stuff. I'm I'm still lost at like what was happening. So I that interaction <laughs> with the game is probably the biggest downside to ZCB. Yeah, no, that's hundred percent true. You just gotta, bolt, bolt, gotta be like perfect. ammunition switch is so annoying. You sh- you should totally be able to just wear both at the same time all the time. Yep. I, I mean, I don't space. even care if it's too OP to save an inventory spot. Yeah. There's literally space in this gear tab. Like, dude, we could just drift over like your uh equipment and just have four different ammo slots arrows bolts javelins just another ammo like right above the current ammo like right next to the face guard yeah i mean they could i i'm, or, I'm <laughs> it's face guard on mine because i'm doing vampires right now it's probably not a face guard for you it's a spirit angler headband Ball that's super cool yeah i want two ring slots too now i i talked to defy oh, John. i think that's rorty's title right now isn't it what Two ring slots. Oh, it's time for a second ring slot. <laughs> that's that's Wardy's title right now. I want it. I think second ring slot's cool. I think a belt slot's cool. More ammo slots. Give me them. I want the belt slot, dude. A belt slot would be weird because like <laughs> various like especially like range and magic gear, they are, they have belts on them, you know. I don't that's care. That's gonna be a little I, misleading. I want the belts. I, this lit- this gear I'm wearing right now has a belt technically, actually want it though okay <clears throat> zandy asks who is the most handsome man on the planet and why is it lake i guess he answered the question <laughs> uh thank you zandy 
All right. Uh, furry wall. If you could eat one boss on, I don't even know what this question is. If you could eat <laughs> one boss <laughs> on Rivian, eat. If you could eat. Was like, that a typo? Eat one boss. On, yeah, not beat. Eat one boss on RuneScape. Which would it be? Would it be so? Jesus. Christ. Uh, let me look at the high scores list real quick. Mm. Oh, I already know what mine is. Yeah, I'm just looking at the high scores, trying to figure it out. This one is really hard. None of them really look that tasty. Uh, what is yours? I want to hear yours first. Uh, well, actually, now I'm kind of debating because now I'm looking at it. Oh, now God. you're second guessing. Yeah, I'm second guessing. None of them really look that tasty, man. You're right, but I, I think I'm gonna go with Zora. Zora? Yeah. I picture Zora being like sour. I can picture Zora being like really good meat, like. Oh, like meaty? Yeah, like I was picturing it like almost like a like a taffy kind of. No, no, no. Zora's like gonna Zora be like Zora candy. Yeah, no. Z I I've never eaten snake before, but I've heard snakes. Maybe I have. Actually, I I don't know. Oh, snakes good. I bet the Hunliff is delicious. <laughs> Just a wolf. Yeah. Any sort of. Pr I heard pr like almost all predator meat in real life is like super super toxic and poisonous. Like probably. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. There's not really great. Yeah, I don't know. I know I don't want to eat spiders. I don't want to eat. Actually, oh, no. Criara, Criara. Oh yeah, I, I think I actually. I, I think I chose one. Kraken. I like seafood. Kraken. Uh, like yeah, I'm seafood. not too big on seafood. <laughs> I like uh, I like like crustaceans, like shrimp. Yeah, shrimp's amazing. This would be like. I like I uh, just... I like I like crab. I just don't like fish that much for mm. whatever reason. I can just see like a. Uh, crack and sushi roll just like raw crack i can't there. say i've ever had octopus so i don't know if i'd like that or not i don't think i have either actually i'd probably like but it. i picture kraken would taste like octopus right probably yeah okay if you could pick a part this is from carter if you could pick a part uh of the game raids 4 would be placed in and themed around where would it be and why or if you could design a new area entirely for raids 4 describe that where would you you place it in the current map of the game yeah so like where would you want raids 4 to be themed mm, raids 4 i feel like i feel like at this point we're kind of getting to either they're gonna extend with like Ferminic or actually extend zaya the way it was originally planned like the whole coliseum and everything oh yeah varlamore what was that place called valamore Val yeah. i think it's Valmore? Var i think it's varlamore or maybe it was Valamore. I think it was Varlamore, though. Yeah, I think it's either got to go in that direction or they're going to do something like Fremenic, maybe even uh, maybe even tying in uh, Majorat with it. I'm trying to think where I would want it. I don't know. I kind of want like a snowy themed. I guess that's Fremenic in a way, but... Yeah, like I was thinking, like just northern in general, like yeah, Fremenic yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, like the whole Majora thing. Yeah, I think that would be a great place. Okay, and that would uh, like lore wise, that would that would allow for some serious power creep. Oh yeah, that was when like we're literally just RS three in a different timeline. Yeah, I'm t I'm unfamiliar with RS 3s timeline. Is that like? Is that like wait wait wait, wait. where was the uh, engineering? All the Majora stuff was like while Gothic sleeps, so like okay. when like Dragon Claws first came out, mm. and then going into like the ancient curses, and it's all kind of tied to that. Was Dungeoneering North? I literally never played Dungeoneering. I never. Dungeoneering was, yeah, it was like northeast, like of the wilderness. I I don't remember like the lore behind it really, uh, but it also had features all around the game. There were, like, dungeons that you unlocked at, like, certain levels that you could, like, access. And they were, like, almost kind of, like, similar to, like, your Dragon Impling Chamber idea. Yeah. Like, they okay. had, like, bountiful resources in, like, these dungeons that you had restricted access to. Mm. What are your thoughts on dungeons? Not, not quite a, not quite like your Dragon Implings, but yeah. Uh, I don't know. I was never, like, good at it. Like, I, I played it as a kid, but I don't think I ever got past, like, 90 maybe. Okay. Uh, and I never had any interest in like actually like playing it like speed running. Like I was a kid doing it because I wanted a chaotic mall. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. I have like fond memories of it, but that's just nostalgia. I don't really have enough to like form an opinion about like putting it in the game or not. Okay, what about this? Thoughts on a new skill in general? Ooh, new skill. Um, I wasn't really a fan of artisan or warding. Yeah, warding just stuff. felt like both of those. Warding, ward, warding especially just felt like selective crafting. <laughs> yeah, was the way much. I saw it. Pretty much. It's like it's crafting, but it's magic crafting. Yeah. So I, I didn't like that. Plus, it was just going to boil down to another like bank skill at the end of the day. Yeah. Or another lap skill. Mm-hmm. It's like a combination. Like it almost felt like it, it almost felt like with the way they described it, like summoning, like on release, like a combination of like a bank slash lap skill. Yeah, it was not enticing whatsoever. And it felt like you could just shove it all into crafting or magic. I feel like I feel like with the addition of thralls, we secured that we can never have summoning, because the day we get summoning, thralls are just automatically dead. You know, I say I don't, I don't know. I guess there's nothing that keeps you from using both, but I, mm -hmm. I feel like that would feel so artificial having like two separate like followers like that. It would be weird, and like, I don't two I separate combat aids. Yeah, I never played then, so I never experienced summoning. But like, yeah, I don't know. I guess I really don't have much to say about it. I say no simply because I just hear other people say no, but I did experience it, but I never actually touched it. So I know it was really broken though. Like I think we could like stuff. try to get some things that people might want from summoning, but not through summoning. Mm. So like maybe ways to expand the inventory because some people might want the uh, inventory familiars, you know? Yeah. So maybe we have other ways to expand the inventory of uh, the divine rune pouch good example yep. you got an inventory slot out of that like on almost everything you do mm -hmm. and then for like the way i look at the game is like we have like a certain amount of power creep that we can do and we have to choose like what we want to get this power creep from and we could get like a massive jump in power creep from having a familiar that sits behind us and attacks a lot like they're all feel kind of artificial like that but at the same time we could also get like that similar level of power creep from like a full ass raid through like gear upgrades that you actually see on your character and you get excited when you get the gear upgrade and like that's kind of the way i look at it like um uh, i'll go back to this one actually um uh, i never liked getting the the assembler from vorkath because at the time that was uh not too long after like we had the the entire twisted armor set shot down and it was a it was the same DPS upgrade as a piece of that armor set would have been, and I just like always thought about how like cool and exciting it would have been like the same way it is now to get Masori, how cool and exciting it would have been to get like a twisted like a twisted chest plate or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. And you do not get that excitement when you get the Vorkath head because nope. it's like okay that's out the way, <laughs> yeah. but it it does the same thing for you. True. But it doesn't feel near as rewarding. That's totally fucking true. Actually, that's a good point. So, like, the way I see it is we have, like, a certain amount of power creep that we can do over time, and we need to be selective with how we do it. Yeah. Damn. Because uh, I don't think power creep is bad, but I think power creep that is just there for the sake of being there and doesn't feel rewarding. You don't you don't feel rewarded whenever you finish a kingdom divided. You you say, okay, that chore's done. I can use thralls now and do 37.5 more damage per minute. Yep. You don't feel rewarded when you get the fork out that yeah. you go, okay, my Tebow hits too higher now. God damn. Yeah, you're speaking total facts right now. I never actually looked at it that way. But yeah, like getting like a Masori body, you feel fucking rewarded. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to get mine. That's my last piece. I, I mean, Sorry, I didn't mean to hit a sore spot. That is not a sore spot because I've barely <laughs> even been grinding to it. I've been doing other random shit. I'm surprised by how little you stayed after getting the shadow. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Dude. I don't. I uh like I I haven't been playing RuneScape the past couple of months, man. I've been playing TOA. True. I mean that was me with revs. I do I do a farm run like every other day. Dude, when I camped revs for three months, it wasn't even like I was playing RuneScape anymore. It felt like a total break from the game. It's just weird. It's like dealing with the mafia. Just back in those days, but um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I I I had a lot with the mafia revs. I think I did like thirty five k with mafia revs. Yeah, mafia revs. That's that's unironically what I already like called it for years. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't even feel. At least for me, it didn't even feel like the same game. It just felt like totally different than RuneScape.
it just felt like so like black markety. Yeah. It almost felt like I was like I felt like I had felt to like dirty. keep it on the low and like I was breaking the <laughs> rules. I felt nefarious. Oh yeah. And you Dude, I wasn't of... doing nothing but contributing to a racketeering scheme. <laughs> and it felt so weird because like you kind of have to be a little toxic because like you you need to defend yourself, obviously. So you're not just gonna be like taken advantage of and just like killed over and over and over. Like you kind of gotta like play the part of like defending yourself and like helping out your little clan that's trying to oh, protect I, world. I must definitely use streamer privilege because uh, like the like Nasty was one of the leaders and he was like mm -hmm. uh, he's a super regular in my stream and everything. Like mm -hmm. one of my oldest subs, I totally use streamer privilege and every time there was like a war or something, I would leave. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. See, this is before I ever started streaming. Like three months before I'd ever started streaming, I just I would I would unironically like leave revs and be like, oh, I, I'm starting my stream. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. That place sucked, dude. Like it was fun, but it sucked. Like it just felt so broken. It just didn't feel like a part of RuneScape. It shouldn't have been there, but you have to take advantage of it because it's so fucking good. Yeah, it was just awful. Yeah, it did kind of feel like it. It's like own game. It was weird. And it feels like you just needed to abuse it, which I just, I hate that feeling. I'm just like. Yeah, it was, it was just way too rewarding. Yeah. Especially at a time, like, uh, I guess this is back on the topic about uh, Scythe not being as used as it used to. Back then, Scythe, Scythe was used. <laughs> True. At least, uh, at least in the period I was doing it, like you scythe like every Slayer yeah, boss. you needed you to do like revs. Every end game scythe, boss. There was no lance. You you'd want to scythe like even Ulm as much as you could. Yep. You needed. And it to was do like, revs. yeah, they, they were way too rewarding not to do. Yeah. On top of if you wanted the wildy weapons. There was so many people that were like, as soon as they nerfed revs and made it like singles and made it like really shitty initially, there was so many people that were like, oh, I should have just abused it. I should have abused it. I oh yeah, and it was it was so hard to get into. Like it was selective as shit. Oh, I, uh, at one yeah, point, I at one point, I didn't go to revs for like four months straight, but I kept paying for it. Mm, was it just because I didn't want to lose my spot? Yeah. Like I was like, what if I want to do revs next week? <laughs> and I just I just didn't want to lose my spot, and I I I just didn't go for like four months one time. Mm. And I think I paid like, I think it was like forty mil a week. So I paid I paid like six hundred mil without without even going once at one point. Jesus. I really did enjoy the game a lot back then, though. I was, like, fucking addicted. I was so addicted at that time. Like, that is all I thought about. I remember uh, during that three months, I started going back to work. <clears throat> I needed... I was working at a Target distribution center, like, 12-hour shifts and, like, an hour commute there over the weekends. And, dude, the whole fucking time I'm at Target, I'm just thinking about going back to revs. I eventually literally quit that job just so I can do revs more. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was pretty bad. It was pretty bad, but um, it was just a t it was a seasonal job. Anyway, I was going back to school, but yeah, I was so insanely addicted to the game. I I kind of miss that in a way, but I'm also glad I'm not at that stage anymore. Where it's just like all I do is think about the game, and that's all I want to do. Yeah, I feel like I have a, a healthier relationship with the game now than I used to. I think what happened for me was just kind of getting out of that competitive mindset. I was. I wasn't, like, competitive, like, high scores, really, but I really wanted to be, like, a fucking beast Iron Man, you know? And I would just put in all the time I possibly could. And just to, like, kind of, like, I don't know, flex, I guess, or... I don't really know what it is. I know I was just truly obsessed with the game as well, besides the competition, but losing that competition and just realizing I can play the game for myself and do goals I want to do and not have to have any sort of competition with it has made... Yeah, like you said, a lot more healthier of a place. Yeah. For me, like, my motivation for playing the game hasn't changed at all. Like, I still enjoy it in the same ways I did, but I I, I had a lot less going on in my life at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, that was like, me too. It was, it was the only thing I really cared much about. Yeah. Because it was the only thing I was doing. Yeah, that was me too. Okay. Landon asks, what's your outlook on the game's future post-TOA release? Do you think TOA is enough to satisfy players until something new comes out? Hopefully not another four years. Yeah, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, definitely, hopefully not another four years. Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, it, it depends how we're looking at it. Like, if we're looking at it as people, like, doing TOA and only doing TOA until the new piece of content, like, 
that that's never gonna work. Like that, I don't think any piece of content could hold up that much. Mm-hmm. But uh, it fitting into like the overall account progression, like as as lame as it is, it kind of feels like like they want people to keep making new accounts and like playing through everything. Because yeah. like as a standalone piece of content, like you can easily get a lot of time out of it, but it's not gonna hold you over until we get the next big release. Unless you're playing like one hour a day. And I, I just don't think I don't think we've ever had or ever will have a piece of content that can like just be like for the, for a large portion of people like the only thing they do for an extended period of time and not get sick of it. Yeah, um, I thought there was a topic on here talking about the Tassacall trials. Maybe I'm missing it or something. What do you? I feel like about? I remember seeing that. Maybe I'm just missing it. I'm like, I'm like scrolling down and up. <clears throat> I feel like it was on the bottom of someone's. Oh, oh, I see it. It's Champions Cape. I see it now. What are some reward ideas you'd like to see from the Tassacall trials? That's the uh, Blue Inferno for those wondering. Yeah, the Blue Inferno. That's all I remember about it. I remember they they pitched it and they wanted it to be structured like the Inferno, but not played like the Inferno. Like wave-based? Yeah, they wanted it to be like wave-based, but they didn't want it to have like emphasis on like I think I think they said pair switching is something they didn't want it to have like any emphasis on, and uh, really, I, I just don't know what even direction they were trying to go with it. It didn't really get talked about too much afterwards either. I feel like that's something we just didn't get to hear a lot about, unless unless I missed a lot of it. Well, I know it was just a game jam thing. I don't think it was like being yeah old or anything, but like it seems like it was something they never really pursued more. Was... But I guess as far as like reward ideas. Man, what are, what are we what are we in need of at this stage? I guess uh, range and magic boots suck. Rings. Uh, suck. There's always stuff that can give you more inventory space, which is nice. Uh, yeah, the majority of rings suck. Although uh, it is kind of nice that so many rings suck because it makes it a pretty easy choice to use light bear <laughs> in a lot of places now. Yep, literally. Uh... Here, let me ask you about this. Wait, was Blue Inferno, was that the thing where, like, you can see your reward and choose to accept it or continue? Was that what the idea was? Like, the enrage mechanic, sort of? I feel like I remember them saying something like that. I actually do like that idea. I was uh, I was thinking we would get something more similar to that with, the, like, the TOA invocation system. Mm-hmm. Like, a, like a risk it and continue kind of thing. Yeah. Rather than uh, just setting the strict difficulty. Like, I misunderstood that when TOA was initially proposed. Mm. I thought it was going to be more similar to, like, RuneScape 3 and Rages, where you risk, like, a portion of what you've earned so far to continue at a higher difficulty. Yeah, I had... Something yeah. like that would be really cool. That would Because be I, cool. I think that that's, like, a really good metric for, like, good players, just, like, how consistent they can do something as well. Oh, yeah. Plus, like that, I'm, that's my driving force for improving at 575s right now. Is I, I want to get where I walk into the raid and I think, okay, there's like a 95% chance I've finished this one. Yeah, and imagine this. Imagine the fucking content of you doing Blue Inferno. You just see your reward, and it's something so desirable to all of your viewers, basically. And you saw, and you say, "Fuck that! I'm, I'm continuing to go. Like, let's go. I'm risking it all. Let's go to the next wave. Like something that like that. Exciting." Something that confu- that complex, though, I-, I think it would cause complete uproar in the community if we didn't get, like, the specifics of it pretty shortly afterwards. Yeah, we would definitely. Look at, look at how the reaction has been to TOA, and it's probably TOA probably doesn't have a super confusing drop rate formula yeah, or anything. Doesn't, most likely. But something like that with re-rolling and <laughs> stacking the loot, like, I'm sure it would have some stuff to it. Yeah, no, they would have and to that reveal would, it. Oh, my God, that would drive people crazy not knowing the specifics. That would be so exciting to watch, though, man. But, yeah, I, I would like the, the risk factor. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm excited for that stuff. Yeah, they don't really need raids. They just need, like, fun, engaging content with new uniques. That's fun. The big thing is fun. Like, just make it be fun. And make the drop rates not insane. Like, keep them, like, as they kind of are. Don't be a nightmare drop rate. Don't be a next one in 53 drop rate. Just have some shit that comes out that's fun. And I also like that... um. I don't know. You could come out with some niche items at this point while we're waiting for the next raid. Hopefully, it'll just come out in, like, two years. But, like, this is the segment where you can have some, like, nice little niche items come in. and Yeah, especially things that were, like, 
proposed for the raid and didn't make it in like they can be reworked in other ways yep. same same with like things that were proposed for next and didn't make it in absolutely some slight tweaks name tweak design tweak basically the same thing but better balance comes from a new piece of content and we have a whole new piece of content to do with it as well yeah i think a lot of people get like super fixated on the rewards and it's like it's like a I feel like that's something that actually keeps us from getting new content is like we they got to have the right rewards, you know. So a lot of times, like we're not getting as much like new things to actually do in the game because we can't really decide what we want it to give us. Yeah, I'm I was just like thinking for a sec. I was like, I wonder what I really want. Like what? Like what do I truly want from uh, like a piece of content? I want to ask you the same thing. Like, is there like something you've ever thought of, because like a boss or a piece of content that you would just love, or a piece of armor or something, like mm. hasn't really been proposed ever? I can't really think of anything off the top of my head, but I will say I really like how they did the uh, the cosmetic kits and pet transmogs with TOA. Yeah. Oh, I, really I like want how to ask uh, you they're like that. prestigious, like. You earn them, and you know when you're getting it. Yep. Are you kind of sad there's no 575 sort of uh, flex? Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. But like we were talking about earlier, I would I would like, uh, especially since we talked about it, I would like uh, some kind of like bonus invocation that replaces the time invocation specifically for hitting 600 yeah. and that having some kind of reward. That'd be cool. The, the obvious thing that comes to mind is a, a cosmetic kit for the shadow, but the shadow is already the coolest looking thing in the game, so I don't know. <laughs> no, you don't really want to mess with that. Yeah, it's not going to look better if they add a kit for it. I'm trying to think, what would be a cool, a cool ass kit to like have? Let me actually look at the log real quick on Tombs of a Mask kit. Yeah, I don't know. Ah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I really, I don't know what kind of like cosmetic thing it would be, but something, something for like hitting six hundred, and giving an option like a way to actually hit six hundred. Actually, I do I like the idea of an invocation being so hard, and it would be super easy for them to balance because they wouldn't have to balance it at various difficulties if you could only do it on six hundred and it replaced the time invocation. True. Yeah, that 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 would have like so few balancing factors because they only have to worry about it on this one specific one thing, scale. Yeah. Because exactly. it's the only time it can be used. Yeah, I think that would be cool. So they don't have to worry, like, okay, this makes, like, the 600s, like, super difficult. But if someone's doing this on, uh, on like, their 300, it only does this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Plus, 575 just doesn't have a nice ring to it. 600s way. Yeah, cool. it just... I talk about it every day. It feels so arbitrary <laughs> that the only reason that... Uh, not just me, like multiple people can't push it to the actual max difficulty is because of a time limit that just isn't possible. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no way uh, 25 minute 575 is even humanly possible or bot or robot possible. It's just impossible. Unless you max it. Yeah, I, I struggle to see how even an eight man team would do it in 25 one day. On top of how insanely difficult that level of coordination <laughs> yeah, would be. that would be fucking I unreal. think the, the sub-40s is pretty possible. Uh, I think, like, a five-man team, for example, would be able to do sub-40, maybe even sub-35. You know what? I'm not going to lie. Maybe it is a good thing that 575s are kind of the caps for solo. And and I know, like, you most likely... Adding on to the you can never get incentive them. for doing teams. Yeah, it adds on to the incentive to do teams, but as well, like with new content, TOA is going to be something where like, okay, we just got brand new gear, even better gear than we thought, better weapons, like a few years down the line, and let's go back and see if we can get that like sub 25 or something. Yeah, I think that was always like the plan with them was like they, they meant for it to be like impossible to hit. They just didn't tell anyone it would be like, the, I'm, I'm pretty sure they mentioned on release or before release that like the highest challenge they don't think would be completable. Mm hmm. They just didn't tell us that it would be because of a time limit. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit depressing. But I think that was always the idea, was it for it, to, for, for it to be something that can be done in the future. It's just, it's so disappointing that it's because of a time limit and just yeah, doing it faster. That's true. Rather than like, oh, you can't beat this challenge. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so insanely hard that no one can beat it. Okay, here's a random question. Third Age Gucci flip-flops. Would you rather have arms as legs or legs as arms, and why? 
Uh, arms is legs for thumbs. Yeah, me too. Thumbs are why, why the hell would you want legs for arms? That'd be awful. Big toes are useless apart from balance, and thumbs are like the most OP thing in the world. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm looking at the rest of the topics. There's not really many that we haven't already covered. I believe we've pretty much touched on each one, but you can look through and see if there's any that uh, st stand out to you that maybe we haven't. That weren't total memes. <clears throat> Uh, let me see if anything jumps out to me. Not all the memes are bad. You let me know. Yeah, one second. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And then I'll have my uh, final topic for you, of course. The shoutouts. Oh, we talked a lot about Nightmare, but I just want to say hi to Flopple. Because I feel bad if we don't read his question. Let's see. What do you ask about Nightmare? Since we both did so much of it, but we already talked a lot about yeah, Nightmare. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll I just say. don't want Flopple to feel left out. Flopple hasn't been on the Sebe House. He'd be good. He has, actually. He has? Yeah. Dude, nah. even Flopple was on it before me. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Bottom of the barrel, aren't we? I mean, uh, I, I love Flopple, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised, man. I'm not surprised at all. Uh, I missed that one. No, I always... It, the, like, the funny thing is, is, like, that actually is a thing. Like, wow, you had this guy on before me. I, I, I know it's all memes and stuff, but it's like, dude, like, I do one of these a week. And sometimes I get repeat guests on because I want to talk to them again. It's like, dude, they're just... I have a I have a list. It is completely disorganized as fuck right now. But it's like, I have a huge list of, like, 80 people I want to eventually get on. And that's going to literally take two years. Just, like... And more than two years because I'm going to get repeat guests on. And it's just like, uh I see... Yeah. But I yeah. see a couple here I'd, I'd like to address. Go for it. So, uh, iLink says, what do you think is the best designed boss, also the worst designed, and if you could design a boss from the ground up, how would you? Uh, I don't really have much for the third one. I'm not super creative, especially not on the spot. But uh, I just thought it was going to be really because I did see that. But uh, yeah, yeah like uh, kind of what I'm getting at. Uh, really, like to me, like two of the better designed bosses in the game right now are like accidentally accidental like beautiful mistakes so uh ohm obviously like i'm super biased on that but just the way the entire fight flows together and how bit how movement based it is as well as like different timings yeah just the base core mechanics of the game really being put to work and then uh also uh like we were touching on earlier like how much the aqua fight changes when you get a shadow and you can do the butterfly like it's it just fun. feels so fluid it's fun you're right like it just feels like graceful, you know? It really does. Especially when you're perfect at it. I am yeah. not perfect at it. Like, I'll still fuck up, you know, with that little delay you need. And then when the shadows it, it, respawn and I'm, like, clicking on them, like, God damn it. It's just crazy how uh, we can get, like, super fun pieces of content and, like, methods that are truly enjoyable that are nothing like what they intended it to be. It's true. Yeah. I guess kind of ironic to answer a design question like that, but yeah. I guess the ones that they don't mean to make good. What are the, are the worst, ones I like the most? Worst designed. I'm gonna tell you right now. Everyone is gonna say next to this, and it, it triggers it's, me so much, it's man. Not next. I. You know what? I'm gonna say this right now. I actually kind of enjoy next now with Fulmasori, Lightbearer, Fang. It act. Fang makes next feel twice as good. Like even just pre TOA, I was on the next agenda, but it's like. I, I, I will admit that like min maxing next and doing it well while being super rewarding and not like overly like mechanically difficult, it's something you have to like think about a lot while doing it and it takes a lot of focus. Uh, the it's just very, very subtle stuff and it, it, yeah. it's not like flashy like to the average player. Like you're not dodging some big death bomb attack and you're not running to like this highlighted square on this exact tick. It's not like super obvious things. It's very minor things you do that add up over the course of a nearly 10 minute fight. The thing that bothered me about Nex is the fact that duos are obviously meta. And with duos at the time, you had to range only. 
like yes you mm. might be able to pull up yeah. some melee switches but it's just like dude you are spending just, the whole fucking time before the zeros. fang the melee switches for the dps upgrade weren't worth it yeah, because it, it absolutely was not one person four ticking is making your team take like 20 percent more damage for the entire fight exactly and it's also messing up the timing of the person uh five ticking like if one assuming one person was five ticking if you had two people meleeing it wasn't working well <laughs> It, but it's also like what you said about the fang the consistency makes shit feel fun and that fang never misses at next the oh yeah you're not misses. gonna be 1363 please core wake up no yeah. the fang is gonna make sure core wakes up the fang is amazing and the biggest problem because i actually enjoyed four man next four man next originally now i love three man next because you can do the same basically fast kills uh, with fang and everything and just feels so good you get a fang a little bit longer as well which feels nice um but the biggest thing is not having to goddamn hit a bajillion zeros with your zcb over and over and over and over it just feels fucking shitty hitting so yeah. many zeros that's the main thing. the one tens are fun but the inconsistency and the fact that the majority of your dps relies on just waiting for what is it a 6.6 percent .6 chance to oh rock. yeah one in 18 or whatever yeah like just just waiting on that to proc over and over and over again yeah and like it, it's a weird like it's it's like soothing and dopamine release whenever you get lucky and it procs a few times in a <laughs> row but at the end of the day like you didn't really do anything for that to happen yeah when you go back to next first of all i think you're gonna have a lot i'm gonna i'm gonna be trying melee and range yes. camps like it feels it up. so fun and i think your viewers your viewers will also really uh appreciate it just like the switches and everything it just adds more variety and just, yeah, yeah i plan on trying a few different setups i'm gonna do like uh like almost like a masori camp and then zcb like spec slash p2 slash force range phases mm -hmm. with uh like just like minimal strength bonus switch with the fang like torture gloves stuff like that and then I'm also like gonna want to try like max gear switches, putting a lot of emphasis on like really maxing the DPS. And then I'll also be seeing like how comfortable just range camping is with the upgrades to range camping. Yeah, a uh, light bear probably being the biggest of those. So uh, back to the worst boss, it definitely is not Nex. Um, I was actually just gonna say my least favorite monster, which is actually an ancient wyvern. Fuck those things. I haven't really killed many. I've never gone for the uh, the visage or anything. I don't have any visages on my account. Really, none. Except for a serp. Yeah, I guess that's a visage. Uh, I I've I've had one visage across like all of RuneScape ever, and it was on my uh my old Iron Man, the alt now. Okay. Uh, I got it on like Christmas Day 2014. No, no 2015. Okay. Yeah, Christmas 2015 is the only visage I've ever had across the game. That's pretty cool though. Cool day to get it. Yeah, except for the part where I was playing RuneScape by myself on Christmas morning. No, yeah, that's the best part. That's the best fucking day of the year. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I've had seven Draconic Visages since 2015. Dear God. Yeah, seven. And uh, three of them have been on this account. And uh, yeah, that Wyvern Visage I spooned. I'm still missing the Skeletal Visage. But yeah, Ancient <laughs> Wyvern. Anything that freezes you. KBD is the same kind of thing, although KBD is like, you just like three shot it now. But um, ancient wyverns are so incredibly tilting before the wyvern visage. And as soon as you get the wyvern visage, there's no reason of killing him anymore. Yeah. It's just pointless. But it's like, god damn, dude. You get frozen, unavoidable damage, nonstop. Those things. Are, oh my god, they're so tilting. But least favorite boss? Probably Alchemical Hydra. I fucking hate that thing. Yeah, I hate the counting. It's I just, hate the counting. And even though they got rid of that... The visual of, cues help so much. The visual but... cues help, but it's like it's such a boring fight. So boring. And the I mean, we do have to remember depressing. it's a Slayer boss, and then it, like, compare it to Thermi and Kraken. I would rather kill Thermi all day. The little red X just over and over. I actually enjoy that. Yeah. It's soothing. And then Kraken is obviously, like, the biggest AFK. Yeah, Kraken with Shadow must be kind of fun now. I don't know. I, I think regular Nightmare is always going to take the cake for worst design. Oh, yeah. I forgot that's even a boss. It, it's like, I think you and I had this conversation so many times. They just, they tried to do way too much at once. And Husky even said it in his own in his own words, too. Yeah, it was a They just tried to do way too much at once. Yep. They took a bunch of good ideas and put all these good ideas together. And it created this giant shit show catastrophe <laughs> that should have never existed, basically. I'm actually surprised they didn't just clear it. 
Like, I, it's so dumb. Yeah, that it's like, like it didn't there. get deleted that they just added a replacement boss and left the old one there. It's, it's like a remnant of the past. <laughs> it's there and the, the, it the excuse is you can do it rates. if you want to do it with your friends it's still it still has the shittiest drop rates it still has the stupid parasite mechanic where it like insta starts healing like even if you kill it instantaneously which fasanis does not have fasanis is literally easier you can one hit husks every single time in fasanis you can't do that in normal and you get shitty drops still like jesus christ delete it nobody wants it yeah, like the one part of like obvious difficulty for Fosani is the fact that you just take more damage when you make mistakes. Yeah. And then to uh, like the rapid black hole phase, yeah. which becomes super arbitrary with five tick weapons, uh, shadow adding to that. Yeah, exactly. If you have a shadow and a scythe, it's... then that mechanic might as well not exist. Yeah. Shadow, scythe. Oh, by the way, um, doing the little like step in, in the corner, you know, you do it with scythe, obviously, but you could just easily do it with the yeah, shadow. Yeah, do it do it while maging with the shadow yeah. and just step on the corner, like, it's so figure crazy. out what tech it is and just step between all your attacks, like, yep. could do the mechanic with your eyes closed. Literally. And, and it's and something Pel that, if you're using four tick weapons, it's the hardest thing of the fight. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Now the shadows feels great. Although it's still, a, I think it's approximately the same DPS as a harm, but you just get thralls now. Just because the accuracy is doing literally nothing. Um, I think it's like yeah. barely. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't really equate to faster kills. It might. It's going to add to the faster potential because of the ability to two hit, whereas harm can't two hit. Yeah, you two hit quite often. But it's, I don't think it would speed up the average kill that much because of it being slower in the overkill. Plus, yeah. the average player is also going to regularly throw an extra shot at every single pillar. Yep. Yep. And the, I'm the, the average player will do that for every single pillar. I'm starting to get a little bit better. I've, I've returned a nightmare a little bit, and I just like blow up because, like, I swear. Especially with with the the, the shadow, it being five tick, the super slow projectile. It's so easy to. It's so slow. Yeah, it's that thing is really slow. The shadow is incredibly slow. I don't know. I feel like it's like a tick slower than every other mage staff ever. It's got a super cool animation though. <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's worth it, man. You know what? That was the thing I was going to offer for, the, like, if they ever did come out with a 600 or, like, a 575 little thing. I was like, maybe oh, just... Oh, a 4-tick shadow? That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Three tick. No, I love that uh, idea. That would ruin uh, Akka's, though. You'd have to come out with a new, like, little 4 pattern. There is a 4-tick butterfly. It's just not very good to use because, like, Sang and Trident aren't that good DPS. Oh, there, but there is a nice like four pattern. Is it simple? Yeah, there, there's four tick butterfly. Do you have to tick? Do you have to click every tick, or is it still every uh, two? Um, I guess it would have to be every tick, or maybe a, like miss. I think it is every tick. Yeah, it's not. It's not as like brain dead. Um, there might be a variation where you can. No, I feel like you're always gonna be clicking like every tick with it. I was gonna say instead of like changing the actual shadows design, you could just have it shoot something else. But Ooh, then again, minute. we already yeah, have a super cool. cool projectile, so probably be worse okay i mean and who's to say the kid has to be for something from toa maybe there's like a dark ancestral like we have the we have the twisted maybe it's something that upgrades and there that uh cosmetically overrides ancestral it's true have you have you seen this i'm not a fan of this but have you seen the suggestion they also had a little design of like inquisitors plus torva you like combine the yeah I saw, I saw that i think uh i think i saw sync tweeting about it looks dark just like bad i think it looks cool yeah it looks hella cool but i'm just like really like we're just gonna i mean i guess <laughs> like I, I don't know I, if the community wants it fine but like i feel like that's a little weird i mean that would be one way to fix inquisitors to just tape it to torba <laughs> dude how about this you know how we're gonna get overloads anyway why don't we just have something that's masori ancestral and torva mixed just a fucking overload armor just wear it i think it would everything. be really really unfair to limit that to like chest legs and helmet <laughs> and i think that we should include like all accessory slots in that as well for the sake of fairness in fact how about we just all include it into one also item? also i'm sorry to interrupt but this yeah. is super important yeah, go for it. uh there's a massive bug in the game tormented bracelet ornament kit very clearly gives you two bracelets but does not give you 10 percent damage damn no it's because one of them's fucking plastic just wearing this plastic bracelet. Dude, honestly, I actually have a problem with the tormented uh ornament kit. The icon looks fantastic. I don't I don't have any problem with that. But when you're wearing them on your wrist, they don't have that glow anymore. They look like pieces of plastic you got from the Dollar Tree. Both of them do. They look horrible. I hate it. 
I actually really don't like wearing it, but I just I like the inventory item of it so much, and you don't really see it on your character. I feel like I don't even notice it because like ancestral. It's I it's I like still get mostly covers by it. it. I get incredibly bothered by it whenever I do see it. Whenever yeah, I'm gonna notice it next time I'm like doing TOA. It has no I'm, glow to I'm it. It's blame just you. plastic, and it and it's so um polygony, you know, where it's just like it just like they put they took no time into making that. I swear. Oh yeah, I'm bothered. By the way, it's ever... like one of like the fifty different like Clue Scroll expansions. Yeah, have you ever seen? They that? were just like desperate for like new oh, ideas yeah. to they like say like, that we, they put new content artist, in the game. We need an artist in ten minutes. As the updates going live. Like somebody makes. I feel like all of that was during like the content drought, and like it was just something to get an update. <laughs> have you seen? I the mean, Colossal I don't know. Hydra, I, I, I know you're really big on Clues, though. Yeah. The Colossal what? Colossal Hydra, the uh, superior. Oh yeah, that thing is. Does not that thing done. still look horrible? That thing is a, that thing is still like work in progress. <laughs> yeah, I killed a shit ton of those on leagues. I would just like AFK for like an imbued heart or something like that. <laughs> that thing looks like it was drawn on paint, dude, and just like released. It looks so. Didn't funny. it have like issues where it would like flip, like uh, clip the floor around it. <laughs> Probably, well? I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. Like a, the floor would go like it looked like TV static. <laughs> like just random tiles around it would like look like static dude that whole dungeon the karoom dungeon like you can't even if if there's any part that's not in the path you just can't even yellow click on it which bothers me so much because i'm so used to like clicking outside of the area just to path over there you know and you just get dead watch clicks. the uh watch the blue inferno be like that oh that'd be so tilting oh my god that's how a regular inferno was would you would get the dead clicks by the, really? uh, the show on so, like, Zuck on release? Yeah, oh, that was that's a super common awful. thing. Awful. Yeah, that's horrible. That's exactly what the Karoom. You would you would get dead clicks if you didn't click on the actual like row that, that you're on. Like if, yeah. if you tried to if you tried to click on uh like the lava, I suppose. Yep, or it the would little just be like a dead bricks, click. Kind of like the little yeah crispy. Yeah, edge. it wouldn't like default to being like okay, yeah, he's trying stupid. to move to the tile that's adjacent to this. It would it would just be a dead click. Yep, that's exactly what that whole dungeon is. It is so annoying. It feels incomplete. Just, like, fix that. I know it doesn't affect many people, but it's still annoying. <clears throat> uh, the other Twitter topic, the last one I saw, was Sigman says, how annoyed were you to see that after months of walking to Nightmare that Fosani's was going to offer a teleport? Or was it a relief that Nightmare was finally getting a, a good update? Uh, <laughs> you and I both were like, the two people who I guess like got the most devalued from the Fosani update. Yeah. But I will confidently say that we were the two Both. biggest advocates yep. for the Fosani update. And that I this might sound like egotistical, but we are the reason that is in the game. I uh yeah. If I, if we did not do those grind if we did not do that grind, it would not have came into the game, at least not anytime soon. Yeah. Until some until some other like content creator did it. Yep. E even even regular players doing it wouldn't have been enough to get like the attention that it did yeah i was really happy when they it, it was like super ironic that like it was announced like right after i got mine yeah like but we we were pushing for it the entire time and i continued like pushing for it afterwards yeah and like trying to help with like the balancing of it and everything that's when you know a piece of content is actually fucking broken is when the two people that are getting devalued the most are literally the ones advocating for it and just like mm -hmm. heavily wanting it like there's a problem here if that's actually happening I mean, I in, in general, I don't really have that mindset about like stuff that I've done getting devalued because I'm I'm never getting that time back anyways. So why do I care? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good mentality to have. Um, what was the last thing? Oh yeah, I guess that was kind of it. Uh, what about the teleport? Were you a little bothered by that of them offering a new thing? I, again, I think we were all. Oh uh, no, I mean about it. Just yeah, just I uh, never place. for a second enjoyed walking there. I mean, it was nice that sometimes I got to pee without, like, being inefficient, I guess. <laughs> but that's about it. The old uh, use an item on a sleepwalker and go pee. <laughs> yeah, fucking three-minute fucking walk over there. Every yeah. single... It, it was so unnecessary, so boring, and that's, like, that's a remnant of, like, how the game... That's, like, like how the game mindset was originally, like we were talking about earlier, where, like, everything was valued and how much time it took. Yep. And like nothing can just be made easier, even if it's annoying. Like it's it's part of the grind, man. Yeah, that was fucking stupid. Like there there's nothing good about gameplay about spending two minutes running to a place. Like I, I know a lot of people like 
especially like they think about like Vorkath and stuff like that. Like they hate these like POH bosses and they're like, oh, I want Dagonoth Kings where you run all the way there. I fucking hate running to, Dag- to Dagonoth Kings, man. Mm-hmm. Like I, 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 I like a convenient video game. Dude, Dagonoth like, I wanna, Kings. I want to focus more on the fun parts of the game and not, like, not a chore. Listen. I just hate chores. Listen to this. I just thought of something. You know, Gommel's Hilt 6? Mm-hmm. Unlimited teleports to DKs. Why not? Just fucking send it. Just it's send not it. like we get shit else for Grandmasters. <laughs> send it, dude. I want it. No, but seriously, it's fucking DKs. Who cares anymore? Like, just give it. Or- I feel like that would be about as, like, as good of... Uh, I feel like that would be, like, about as strong as something could be that we could reasonably expect to be added to Grandmaster. Yeah. Because J- Jmons have said, like, yo, Blood Shard. I have been Fuck trying to get yes. a fucking blood shard since since TOA came out. Let's go. Is that a <laughs> sentinels you're killing? Yeah. Nice. But uh, Jmods have said uh, like publicly that they're hesitant to add anything to combat achievements because the second they add a good reward that people actually want for more than just a flex and mm-hmm. for actual like playing the game, is the second that they will constantly be bothered about making it easier. That's true. Right now, like. It already people has that don't have a Zuck Helm, they're not bothered by not having a Zuck Helm. Yeah. Yeah. If if there was something that actually helped, like the whole like defender with the accuracy and all that, like something that was actually like truly good and changed the rest of the game, people would be like, okay, this needs to be made easier. Dude, okay. I'm not gonna lie. I'm obsessed with this DK's teleport idea. Also, you know the mor- moral wreck uh teleport? That yeah. needs to not teleport you in that little fucking area. It needs to teleport you into the bank vicinity. Like, it needs to. I think that could honestly be a really nice perk. Into the bank or, or hear me out. Okay. The tile directly next to where you enter the Inferno. So what you could do, teleport there, drop a potion, go to the bank, pre-bot, teleport there, drop your hilt, pick up the potion, go in. But you need to run to the bank anyway. So why not just run to the actual inferno itself Just teleport to a different bank that, yeah I think that's that's true but that's for the inferno nerds i'm not an inferno nerd so this is not helping my agenda man what the fuck you know, even the non-inferno bank. nerds can still oh what are you trying to oh you just want to be a i just want to i just want the closest bank to be from that hilt just, just want it to be a good oh just slightly just, just because, in general banking it, i mean it, that's fair yeah. because like we have the crafting guild bank which is like oh you know the elitist bank or whatever all the max players go basically max bank but i want like super max bank you know i want that moral rec bank right there to be the super max bank yeah and the dk thing you know that little area where you can peek underground and like see the dk's layer that little like crack mm-hmm. in the floor that's where i want it to teleport us yeah oh, that'd be super cool i want that i really like the dk teleport one yeah i think that's just brilliant and and you could still but get yeah it, from the it, it is you so get, weird like, two it is so weird that the it is so weird that the moral wreck one teleports you to like off in the corner. It's stupid. <laughs> like, what are you even doing over there, man? No. And it's like it's not even on like the other There's side. There's no of that significance rock. over there. It's on the back side of the rock, so you have to take an additional like five ticks just to run. It's just like side. a. It's one of the long list of things that are just intentionally made inconvenient for no reason. <laughs> I know. Think like a hydro <laughs> shortcut, wyvern shortcut type stuff. Or it's like just randomly another week. Hey, we got a game update. Two new elite clue steps, both on Isle of Souls, both four minute fucking journeys. Just run over there. I gotta say though, I'm I'm super happy with the level of attention and like consistent. Like not all of them have been good. Some of them have came with like bad side effects too. But like consistent tweaks and rebalances for TOA. Like yes, they've done a great job. They didn't just release it into the game and then be like, oh, we'll we'll come back down the line. Yeah, they've been on which is top which is it. what happened with uh tob and chambers tob and chambers on release were released as is and Never they would it. take notes of feedback that people gave but nothing changed for so long yeah they've been on top and of it. toa was changed it's been a new raid every week <laughs> yeah it's been uh kind of like almost overwhelming if you if you're like consistently playing it like those first few changes were yeah. like actually like whoa shit, yeah especially like- the first ones the invocation rebalances because those were truly like meta shifting yeah that was but i'm glad they and just like the entire way. difficulty of the raid would change a lot with it too if they were to do that right now or like two weeks from now or something some crazy change like that like dude <laughs> you are that is a bad call but it's a good thing they do it in a week because even though it feels like it's a bad call like in the moment or something or like people are just upset or frustrated it's like dude you'll move past it in a week but you get people used to a raid for three months that's a different story 
Yeah, like um, all the TOB and chamber and uh, chambers changes. Like over time, they were good things, but they just took so long to happen. Yeah. Okay, um, Lake. It's been about three and a half hours. I want to ask you for three shout outs to finish off the cast. So, uh, any three community people, just anybody in the OSRS scene that you think uh, deserves a shout out. Uh, three shout outs. I, I got three. All right, shout out number one, uh, my man Coxie. Much love for Coxie and uh, especially like uh, I got re I got a lot closer to Coxie. Like we've always been friends. So we've been subbed to each other for like five years each. Mm -hmm. But I got a lot closer to him whenever we did the uh, group Iron Man stuff. And uh, his community especially, they were like super accepting of me. And like a lot of them like have, are even still regular viewers of mine right now who might not have watched me too much before group iron man it's just like a really cool like community like very welcoming yeah that's that's 100 percent. he's got a great community <clears throat> but uh shout out to him because he's gonna be going through some shit <laughs> yep uh second shout out um mr puggin of course one of my closest friends that i've met on this game uh, i've had the pleasure of meeting puggin i think like three times now in real life he uh he even came and uh visited katie and i along with his girlfriend uh not too long ago oops but um yeah shout out number two is for my man puggin and shout out number three uh i want to give my third shout out to uh mr no monkey like i was talking about earlier i've been a super big fan of his stream recently he uh a lot of people like say this about me for chambers like i make it look effortless i i feel like no monkey makes everything he does look effortless like he doesn't even look like he's looking at the game when he's streaming like he's like full focus on whatever conversation he's having yep. and like even with like toa something he hasn't done very much and something that i can vouch takes 95 percent of my focus and i immediately die every time i just try to read a question let alone answer the question just reading it out loud i just immediately die half the time and he just makes it look so effortless, and it's mind blowing. But his stream has been growing a lot, and so it's like I'm gonna break the rules and uh, do more. So it's like Kirby stream, for example. They're, they've been growing so much, and it's so cool to see them getting like recognition that they definitely deserve. Absolutely, those are fantastic shout outs. All right, uh, Lake or audience, if you guys are still here after three and a half hours, um, down in the description we'll have Lake's Twitch. Uh, uh, twi what am I even trying to say? His Twitch link <laughs> down in the description. Also, your Twitter. Is there anything else you'd like, Lake? Your YouTube. I know uh, you do have a YouTube. I, I know you don't upload f super frequently. Nah, you ain't got to put my YouTube. Twitch right. and Twitter. Perfect. Uh, Lake. You can put my uh, yeah. you can put my PayPal in there. All right, we'll put your PayPal in there for sure, guys. Donate to Lake. Also, uh, you know, become a patron as well. No, uh. But, yeah, we'll have your fucking pay PayPal on there. Why not? Sure, man. <laughs> uh, Lake, I really do appreciate your time today. I actually had a, a a really nice time talking to you. I feel like we've never actually talked before. So, even though it feels yeah, like... Yeah, we've, uh, we've, we've been in each other's streams so much, like, yeah. very regularly. But actually speaking one-on-one -on -one never happened. Yeah, it's crazy, though, because it already... But it, it yeah, it's like crazy, like, how smooth before. it flows. Yeah. It's the same way when you meet people in real life, man. Is that really it, what It's it the is? same way, yeah. Okay. Like... Even if even if you've only like spoken to them like through Twitch chats, like Puggin and I like spent very little time on like Discord together. Like even when we boss and stuff, like we're usually streaming and want to focus on talking to our stream, not each other. Mm -hmm. But like whenever we meet in person, it it, it feels like it's just like, like never even skipping a beat. That's so cool. Yeah, I met uh, one of my viewers last week. That's where that little Rip Bozo meme came from. But uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I saw that actually with the cigars. <laughs> <laughs> just like. It felt so natural just meeting a guy like because we've yeah. already kind of talked and never like in person, but I he did stream a few times, so I knew like who he was and stuff kind of. But yeah, it just feels At least totally you knew happy. you weren't getting abducted. Yeah. Nah. Uh, yeah. Other than the abduction that happened later, like it was totally cool. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it for me, guys. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, next week, we're, we'll be having Rasta Man on the Sebe cast, another absolute beast gamer. So look forward to that. And yeah, Lake, any last words? Uh, thank you for having me on, man. I've, like I said at the start, I've been listening since the very first one and super excited to finally get to be on. Hell yeah. Thank you very much, Lake.
everyone have a good night catch you in the next one